we're doing this. I should probably take my gum out. Cheers, sir. Salute. That is good. Mm. That's for, ooh, dang. Mm. Ooh. There it is. That finish. Boy, that's good. That slow caramel. Ooh, I like that. Caribbean. I like that a lot. I never thought I would like, uh, like really be able to appreciate um, like liquors. Like bourbons. The grown man brown, as I call them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I never thought I'd really be able to. I'm like, ah, that's just all trash. Yeah. I used to say I hate wine too, though. <clears throat> how, uh, how much has Deja affected that? Some for sure, because yeah. she's on this kick right now. Yeah, and I'm. Yeah. Which is pretty cool, by the yeah. way. That I think, I think <laughs> it's pretty. I think it's pretty dope. She's down for sure. Yeah. She's down for sure. Although I've been trying to drink less. Well, yeah, yeah. Dude, I got up to two oh six during all this shit, and like I'm down to one ninety four now. Yeah. But it hasn't. It's been slow. But you, yeah, you got to put a cap on sitting there all day, and <clears throat> I mean, but some of that is. Um, you have to allow a little bit of that. I think sometimes it's okay to go. Okay, let me take a step back and uh, enjoy. Yeah. So for 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 your mental capacity, your status to go. Okay, but then put it back in check. Yeah. Because if you spend your life constantly focused on that thing, then it just burns you out. Yeah. You know that's, that, that's anything, right? I'm, I'm so hot and cold though, and I'm so in touch with my body. I notice, like, uh, when I when I drink, mm -hmm. then I crave it more the next day. I get that. And I'm just like, oh, all right, well, it's just one more day. And then, and and then one more day turns into one, another. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, I, Deja was talking about, I'm so hot and cold. It's like either I'm all in or, or I'm not, not there. I get all. it. <laughs> There's not it. a lot of that's, fluctuation. I mean, but I think that's fighters or jiu-jitsu guys in general. They're just crazy people like and, us. And learning how to how to balance that. And um, But what always brings me back again is jiu-jitsu. Go, okay, well, I got to get back in the gym next week. So let me pull back a little bit now. Let me start. Because yeah. you get stuck in a position, you're going – that's not, not as flexible as I need to be there. Yeah. The, the engine's not running like it should. Right, right. So it always checks me a little bit. Yeah, how you feeling about, you know... Going back? Going back, yeah, man. I mean, because the gym's been open for a few weeks now, Yeah. right? And yeah. so I guess it'll be about a month whatever, sure. by the time we start kids' class. Mm -hmm. um, it's been so long, you know, like, jiu-jitsu is an everyday kind of thing. Right. It has been for 18 years right. for me. <laughs> It's the longest I've been away for it, from it for a while. Yeah, dude. I miss it. I imagine a lot of people are just going crazy right now. Just for yeah. the mental state, you know for what sure. I mean? Like the community. It's tough. Um, just even the friendships. Yeah. You know, just yeah. you get used to being around people and you miss them. I mean, man, you know, when you, you miss your students. Well, I mean, you miss your friends. Yeah. You know, these are relationships you've had forever and – you can't replace those bonds. Yeah, um, man. Some no, special. There is. And I, I just miss training my mind also yeah. in that capacity. Yeah. So. And, like, now that I'm teaching a whole lot more, there's there's something special about teaching people. Oh, yeah. And, like, seeing their progression. Oh, completely. And seeing things click. Like. It means more than anything you do personally for your own. It's so crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's so weird. Like, it just it's like you just have this certain affinity for these people now. It's fun for me personally to sit back and watch you grow from it and watch how much it means to you. So when, how excited you get when you talked about, like, the 6 a.m. class yeah. earlier. Um, or to see your pictures and when you post them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we'll text or something. You'll tell me about how much uh, this guy's growing and how much, you know. So it's always, for me, that's uh, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, you're just like, I mean, you're obviously ahead of me, but it's like I imagine one day I will for sure be kind of where you are now. Well, past me. Well, yeah. I'm just saying it's yeah. in the sense of, uh, you know, I had a student sure. who yeah. decided to, like, go further right. and take on that, that teacher role. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know you're doing things right when they decide to do that. Yeah. For sure. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. My game is, is certainly evolved, um, like, exponentially since doing kids class. And, and sure. that's one of the most positive response. I repeat that often, but that's one of the most positive responses I ever get. Um, and it's also a sneak attack by me too. <laughs> it's also like that little bit of manipulation that I try to get with people to 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 bring them in. Like you know, you take first of all, you can't beat have the relationship you develop with your own kids. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have your children in the class and you get to be one of their coaches, right? Because but. The hard thing to balance, though, is it's it's although you're traveling this path together, yeah, this is their journey, and this is your journey. You right. know, like it's still got to go. You can't because you're injured. You still got to bring them. 
Yeah. Or because maybe one of them has homework, you know, you can't let that necessarily affect the other one long term. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Things like that. Or you have to remember you're traveling these paths together and there's similarities, but it's also your individual journey and it's their individual journey. And you right. have to have respect for that fact. Yeah. Sometimes it's not about you. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. I feel, <clears throat> I think I've definitely been guilty of uh, just kind of like let my own, like, Get, right. like my own feelings kind of get in the way maybe of like a training session for the kids here or there right like i feel like we're all guilty of that shit what but happens yeah, yeah it definitely happens but um dude let's just jump right into it like yeah. why we're actually fucking here like in jujitsu is probably the perfect segue because um i i'm a big uh, we're both big believers and proponents and the life-changing aspect of jujitsu yeah and what it brings to people and the horrific shit that's been happening forever, but more recently uh, in Minnesota and New York. And, you know, that cop um, killing uh, George, George Floyd. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, it, in I don't know why I didn't have like second. I don't want to like fuck up somebody's name. name I always right, do that. But it's right. like, you know, putting his knee on his neck. And I think a lot of real jujitsu people can kind of see like they're there's some that are trying to argue the fact that it's not going to do that to him. Dude, I saw this motherfucker post something. You saw it. I saw it. It was on the it's, back of your on his neck, but bro, his shoulder was up. His his hand is up here and he's up smiling like and he's supposed to be a brown belt. I bet I would thrash that motherfucker, dude. Yeah, all belts aren't created equal. No, they the aren't. Jugo Vagi BJJ. <laughs> it's just not. They they just aren't. It's just not. They and just aren't. Yeah. And what and what what I've found out even at the black belt level is not again that still holds true. Not all belts are created equal. Um, you don't, I mean, I've never walked into a tournament as a black belt, um, expecting to walk through people, but I also walk in going, my belt might be created slightly different than yours and I should not be out of this fight. Right. Um, and what the reality for them isn't our reality. That's how I tend to look at things. And <clears throat> just mechanically looking at that picture, everything was wrong. Oh, it, was, it didn't even... Even defensively for the person on bottom, it wasn't the same. He had an op hey, I'm going to put my knee on your neck, Adam. Are you going to prepare for that? Right. Right. And that's what he had an opportunity to do. That's not what happened. And to be clear, um, and I know this is a theme that's going around now, and I, I made a post about it, not that anybody saw it because we just talked about that. <laughs> you know, um, nothing's changed. Racism exists today like it did before. I mean, it's diminished some, but it also reinvents itself. Yeah. But we just have... It's just, you know, the, this revolution is being publicized. Dude. Because there's camera phones. There's cameras now. Nothing. My parents had to talk with me. Their parents had to talk with them. And so forth and so on for generations. And th that hasn't changed. The only thing that's changing now is we have social media and we can document the events. Yeah. That's it. It's, like, it's more prevalent for people now to be aware. 100%. And... I mean, for sure, there's been some incremental changes throughout, oh, absolutely. throughout, you know, but it's like to think that things are at a place to where like something doesn't exist or isn't yeah. happening. Like you're just you're just willfully being like ignorant, ignorant and blind to the situation. Right? I also hate to hear people say, um, I don't see color. Um, yeah. Bitch, we all see color. We dude. all see color. There's a difference though, and I think. How do you perceive it though? Yeah, how do you you can you can recognize color, yeah. which means I can still respect you for who you are and what you are, and it doesn't have to mean a whole lot to me. Right. But we see it. Right. Um, or <clears throat> why is this action or or is this death more important than what's going on in Chicago? You know, which over you know Memorial Day weekend there were ton of deaths again and i picked chicago because you know that was high school and college for me right and i had a friend make that statement <clears throat> and i respect it and it's a horrible thing but they're almost two different issues because one is economic in chicago which there's so many different levels to that um which eventually as you move down the chain turns into gang activity because people you know just the economic situation that and they're we're, in or tribal or tribal yeah for sure right but it all begins with economics though 100 percent. and i'm not saying it doesn't deserve you know attention it absolutely does well there's the economic piece right and then well then you're gonna you're gonna like 
you're gonna gravitate towards people also in your so in your same yeah. economic state, sure. and we're like, well, let's come up to fucking together. Like yeah. nobody else cares about us. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. Period. We, we live similar existences. Right. Right. So let's take care of each other. Right. Um, so is it more important than the other? Not necessarily. But the thing that separates them is that one and I, I hate to have to preface anything. I hate I hate that I hate shit. Prefacing. But we have to. I, I don't man, I don't know. I, 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 I get caught up on that. I, f- I hate feeling like I need to preface and say, you know, all cops aren't bad cops because that's a known it's factor. Like, duh. I don't like how they try to like downplay it's one person of cops. If anything, it's at least ten, if not. And I'm just fucking throwing out. Numbers. Even if it was one. Even if it was, that's it's a, one it's a too problem. fucking many. It's but it. it's like, I think it's probably more like twenty five. I, I have no idea what it is, but we do know it's not the vast majority. Right, we do know that. We do know that. That's an absolute that. fact. And and I feel like my friends, my students, my former roommate that are law enforcement know that when you make these statements, you're not talking about them because they're not the problem. Right. When somebody says, oh, that black guy stole this from me, well, I don't think they're talking about me. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? 100%. So I don't, I don't know why you would take offense to because you're, you didn't do the action. But I do know it makes it harder for the good people to do their job. Right. And I had a college coach, and I've said this before in here. If you think I'm talking about you, I probably am. Well, you you don't harbor those feelings, so you know I'm not talking about you. Right. But that being said, back to the original discussion, the difference between the two is one's, a, for lack of a better way to put it, a paid guardian. Yeah. You know, people think that socialism, there's no socialism. Well, yes, there is. Because our public schools are socialism. And it's paid for with taxes. Uh, a fireman or your EMS or any of those or, or, or police officers, that's socialism because they're paying for that. And we have the right to expect more out of people that we're paying to be guardians, so right. to speak. And I don't mean disrespect when I say guardians, but in some way that's what it is. 100%. And we can expect more of that. And with great responsibility becomes, you know, I mean, come on, man. You, you, I, I expect more of myself when I'm in the academy as a black belt. Yeah. I expect more to you as your parent. Right. And that's, and guess what? That's okay. I have a, so maybe, I don't think, I know, so we train with a lot of, a lot of officers, fucking great people. I have, I have more positive experiences actually, um, on an individual level with people in law enforcement than negative. I've had my, I've had negative ones. Um, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's the individuals who are bad. Some for sure. And maybe that's the 1%, but it's the system in which they're operating that's broken and is bad because right. first of all we didn't have police officers i'm not and, and, and this isn't to say that police officers wouldn't have come around at some point because i think we can kind of all agree that people are going to do bad shit and we need we need somebody to kind of you know regulate police that, that. Right, right. but police officers didn't even come around until we abolished slavery and the whole purpose of police officers were to capture slaves label them felons, and then return them to slavery. That is the foundation of the field. I don't know if people understand that. So whenever something is laid on a broken foundation, and you can even apply that to our judicial system, because if you're looking at Supreme Court judges who sit for life, there's going to be a whole lot less of them filtering through that system, and some old world ideals are for sure going to linger linger period so if we have a system that is already broken and we already know that the law enforcement system in various cities is is so outdated like the the things that they do and the techniques that they do you have good people doing very bad things it happens you see it you saw it in germany in, in, in nazi germany yeah there was a stanford i think it was stanford there was a stanford um experiment done like back in like the 70s or some shit where they took a group of students, everybody volunteered, and they made half of them prisoners and half of them inmates. And they had to cancel the study after a few days because we have all these college-educated kids, and then all of a sudden, like the people who were put in in the um, in the in the criminal aspect were being treated like shit by the students who were the prison guards. And then now you have these perfectly good kids doing horrendous shit to other people. This is a real fucking study. And that just speaks to the psychology I'll, I'll one up you. of the you versus me. When I was um, in high school, Illinois has this, um, this program called Boy State. And it sounds like some prison reform thing. 
but they take either the best or kind of the worst of the state, and they and you can go to this political camp that was in Charleston, Illinois, Eastern Illinois University, and I believe it was a week, and you just do these mock political camps, and I went, <clears throat> and it was crazy to see when you went through the um, the whole electoral system, and you started at the most uh, gra- molecular or ground level. Um, from electing officials, you know, just from your city council on up to governor, which was the highest level, to see how corrupt it could get. And we're just talking about juniors and seniors. This in is high a school. simulated, simulated environment where just just two days ago, maybe you were just at home in your parents' house or hanging out with your friends. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I had people walking in my room trying to make backdoor deals. Yeah. You know, societal s- structures and and um and positions. It will affect the way somebody oh, acts. It was scary. Like I, I, I and I ended up running for Someone governor. Someone who would never do horrific shit yeah. will do some terrible shit. I ended up running for governor, and it wasn't out of like the fact that I wanted to. It was just like you kind of get momentum. Momentum happens, and you end up in a position. Yeah. And then I'm going, oh my god, what is happening? And then you're watching all these things happen, and people that are in your corner, and you're watching them make deals to get you where you got to go, and it's the exact same thing, and it's it's scary the things that happen. Man, like people are just people, mm-hmm. and and the fact that people feel like they aren't is like like for some reason somebody's gonna like if they're a politician like they're not going to to do certain things in their own best interests, or if they're a cop they're not gonna do things in their own best interests. Like you're a little naive if you don't think that human nature is set up for self preservation. Well, what's the saying that the people that want the job are the people that shouldn't have the job? Yeah, especially you know. in law enforcement. I, especially in government. <laughs> it goes both yeah. ways. And there's a difference. Oh, yeah. And maybe less law enforcement, especially. That's probably yeah. a better example. Yeah. Government. And, and there's a difference between even uh, law enforcement and a soldier. I think it takes two different individuals. I don't yeah. think they're necessarily. It can be. I don't think it's necessarily the same person. I no. think you have to have a different mindset. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. You yeah. know, we can go right back to that movie and then. Um, go to the Denzel movie, we were, the siege we were talking about before, and Bruce Willis is in it, and he had a, uh, a line in a movie where he talked about the U.S. military being the broad sword, not the scalpel, mm. which I think is uh, prophetic when he said that line because the things are done in two different ways, and there's certain individuals who are perfect for the military whose mindset is not necessarily... I want them on the wall to protect my country. Yeah. But they're not necessarily wired to protect and serve in society in specific ways. And that's no, I don't mean that as an insult. Right. It just, it's just different. 100%. And I, and I think I think the political example is even better because politics is supposed to be public service. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to have a fucking job. And then now you as a, as like, you know, as like an obligation to your community and like as serving you run for like an office and like you want to be in that political realm like now people are making a career out of being a politician so much so that it is now its own class of people like there's the political class and right. they're different than the everyday citizen and they do not represent the will of the citizens no they represent themselves and they've proven that time and time again and as we know human nature they are going to preserve what they have. Right. They they just are. So if you if you like if you apply that to police officers, like you may have a really good dude who might sit back and like not say anything because he doesn't want to lose his job or interrupt the status quo or interfere with his brothers that may protect him one day or right. Like you don't you don't want your community to turn against you. Right. But then now you're just as guilty as them. Right. Period. Right. It, but the system perpetuates it. The, the system becomes so big, whatever it is, and you can apply this to many different like factions of the government. The system gets so big that it's just its own entity, and the people within it are just cogs keeping it going. They're all replaceable. But it's designed to self-protect. Human nature. Yeah, it's going to yeah. protect itself in its own interest. So it's like, how do you change it? Oh, it's like, okay, well, do we change it from within, which – that's hard because if you speak up you lose your livelihood right so it's like change is either non-existent or it's like it's so slow it doesn't even matter okay well then you say well you vote you vote you write letters to your elected officials 
um, you know, you can do these things as a citizen, but it's like, well, our elected officials aren't even d adhering to the will of the okay. people. Well, let's say so this. it's like, how do you create change through action? Let's just say neither one of us like the two-party system. Okay? Right. But this is a great example. Let's, let's pretend um, Person X is not a Donald Trump fan and you are uh, lean toward being a Democrat or that faction in general. You're just not a Donald Trump fan or a Republican yeah. fan in general. Yeah. What do you do the last election? Do you theoretically, do you vote for Hillary? You know, and I'm not asking for you to say, you know, specifically what you do, or do you go with Bernie and possibly throw away a vote because you know that some people seem so extreme he's most likely not going to win, but he's also your heart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, you're kind of stuck in between um, by default this other person's going to win. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's I think that idea that you throw away a vote is maybe the source of the issue. Can be. Because it's such a widely accepted idea that nobody throws away a vote by not voting for one of the two. You vote your heart. Right. So I think if or if do you vote the winner to make a change? Or well, they're perceived. Right. Are you making a change? They're on the same fucking team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're on the same team. So it's like, if you are really trying to vote in change, it's like, dude, maybe maybe this cycle you did waste your vote. But if you stuck to your guns and then now it just compounds the next cycle. Oh, well, now, oh, shit. Now you know, the independent just has has 15%, not 5 Oh, shit. Now they got 30%, not, not 15 It's like... The change has to start somewhere, and I wonder if, if that idea of it's a wasted vote is what continues to perpetuate that. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I, I disagree slightly. Okay. I don't think they're on the same team, but I think they have some of the same teammates. Because I think... For sure. One reason we're... They're all playing the same game. That is fact. That Okay, and maybe that's a better way to put maybe it. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> because maybe... <clears throat> and again, I'm, I'm not here to bash... Donald Trump or anybody that, that voted for him. But I think that the world we live in personally would be slightly different if he's not president. Um, so I have a hard time saying they're playing for the same team. I think they have a lot of the same teammates because let's just say Bernie is president. Um, and I'm not saying any of these people don't have issues. They all have issues. Yeah. They really do. So don't mistake they're that. They're all fucking people, they're, they're man. All, man they, yeah, there's, 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 but... For the f there's a there's a group of people that that are Donald Dre Trump fans that voted for him for economic reasons, and you know if you're a business owner too, I get it because you know that I get that that makes As sense. my economic mind does not hate Donald Trump. Sure, I, I get that, and that's that's what I'm speaking to. Right. But there's also a group of people that voted for him because um, of their belief system, and a lot of those. I feel like he's made it. Um, easier for a lot of people that have a certain specific beliefs against minorities. I think he's made it very comfortable for them to speak their mind. Because yeah. when you see it happening at the top, it's easier to do it in the middle and at the bottom and on the way down. Um, so would it be different? I think it would be different if somebody else was our president. I think it was, and I hate when people say, well, he gets so much flack and he, no other president's been hated like this. That's not true. I think every president gets probably equally hated ah uh, maybe some more than others some more than there you go sure. some more than others some more than others and some more vocally about certain things because obama got it in a whole lot of ways and a lot of it was because of his race and for people to say that obama didn't get treated that way is absolutely false um but now we also look back at George W. Bush and you go, man, maybe he wasn't so bad. That's how it always happens. It's yeah. like after yeah. the fact, you're like, yeah. oh, man, they're cool. But it, I can remember. Likeable guy, up, though. Likeable guy. Super likeable guy. Yeah. But nobody liked him as president. No, not not during. No. He, I remember growing up, like, here's the thing. Like, it's really weird. Like, you only have so many presidents in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And, like, in the beginning, you're completely kind of influenced by who's around you, whether that's parents sure, or absolutely. teachers or right. friends. That's all or, you know. You know what I mean? And, like, what are their political beliefs? And for most people, it's usually a parent or something in right. the house, right? Or their community. Like, that's why so many black people just – or white people even. Like, they just vote instinctually line, vote yeah. with their party line based off their community. Yeah. You see it on both sides. So it's like you, you base – 
of these these kind of opinions off of like no real understanding or knowledge and then you just kind of perpetuate this thing but it's like you only deal with so many presidents and i don't know what the fuck my point was with that but it was it was something like when i i think george bush was he was the president by the time like i was old enough to vote and start to get it and yeah. start to kind of like understand like what's going on it's your baseline yeah you know what i mean it's just like I don't really have. I don't know where my point was with that, Tracy. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I but, lost it. But, but that's okay. history shows now. We look back and you go, well, at least he was a decent human being. Right. Right. Um, and you, you know me better than a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> but let's just say that anybody that happened to be looking at my Facebook feed recently um, may not believe what I'm going to say. Maybe they would. Maybe they know me well enough. But I'm not really a political person. Yeah, I'm not either. I'm not. But this is a human issue it's a human rights issue dude it's, i've yeah. never been so fucking sick i lost sleep over all this shit like yeah you said earlier you were you were up early and just couldn't rest and yeah couldn't. dude like i i tried i you know i try to focus on positive shit yeah and yeah. there's so much injustice in the world kind of error more to the side of numbing yourself and ignore not i don't want to use the word ignore but just focus yeah. on on something else and it's like there's so much injustice in the world that can become overwhelming yeah. and, and almost crippling. And it's just like, all right, well, I can either focus on this negative injustice or I can try to be a positive force in the world. You know what I mean? But right. being the positive force in the world isn't necessarily going to fix the negative no. shit, right? So, and so I, I try not to, like, get caught in that loop. And I, while you, know, you talk about, like, it's important to have the conversation, I think it's absolutely important to have the conversation. I think it's more important to have the conversation in person or even like this, what we're doing is super important. Like it's also important to maybe have it on, on the social platforms. Right. But then I wonder how, how much of that is just turning wheels or the, like the ants fighting Empty amongst conversation. Them. Yeah. It's like, is it, yeah. you know, it's like, the elites are they looking oh the fucking subjects are fighting amongst each other great perfect we're, we're creating an even greater divide and no one's changing fucking opinions online dude sometimes it's just i'm not gonna lie it feels fucking good to put a, a, a very well like art like articulated Articulate like out, eloquent yeah. fucking it's in writing everybody can see it you're getting these fucking hearts like people are, are like rallying behind you because you just fucking just put it to somebody but it's like other than just, like, a feed my own ego and, like, maybe get some dopamine hits. Like, am I really changing shit? Because, like, my, my cortisol levels were so fucking high, dude. Like, I, I was up to one in the morning just, like, shaking, like, just, like, ready to fucking choke somebody out, man. Like, and I'm not afraid to have this conversation <clears throat> in person. Right. But it's just... Yeah, because there were some ignorant people. Dude, it's just, like... <sighs> it's like, what the fuck, man? Like, how 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 much can you just ignore it? Like... It's okay to have your beliefs, but to just completely ignore. Yeah, the other side. What's happening? Yeah, or that, just to discredit that. You, you it. can't toe the party line so much that you lose humanity. Yeah. And I think that that's what, what's what we saw on some of the things we read or people that that showed up and the, the comments they made, which is disheartening. But I, but what also you know speaking of those dopamine hits, and are we making a difference? I, it it blessed my heart to see how many people showed up that didn't have to show up. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's where I choose to think that those things can make a difference. And when I had, um, one of my jujitsu parents, a couple show up a couple of years ago and after class, they approached me and, and white couple and they said, what can we do? What difference can we make? What can we do? And I, I wow. You know what yeah. I mean? Like who, I want to say who does that, but who, how great of a person do you have to be to, to do that and say, I want to make a difference. What can I do? Yeah. And well, you've you're doing it right now and have the conversation. And I've been asked that even more recently by other people. And, and that parent asked me that again online the other day. Do you hear that knocking in your ear? It's probably my cauliflower ear. <laughs> oh, well, like it's a, I hear this knocking. Sorry to cut you off. It's okay. I, I don't know if it was me. I, I don't hear it. Other people might hear it. I don't, or it could just be me and my headset. Keep going. It on. might be your mind. <laughs> I'm a little guy trying to get out. But <laughs> um, but they showed up. They didn't have they to show up. They didn't have to show up. And I, I think what my response has been to people is have the conversation, but have it when it's most uncomfortable for you. Yeah. 
have the conversation when when nobody else is going to know that you had it necessarily. Yeah, growth isn't comfortable. Have the conversation. It never is, and I tell it to my kids all the time. Um, have it when it's just you and your air quote friends that may make that comment that's unpopular and that isn't right and you disagree with it. Say something to them. Have the conversation when I'm not going to know you had the conversation or your other friends of color or of any shade of brown or right. anything that's the opposite of you isn't aware. Right. That's when it counts most. Right. That's when you stand up to it. Uh, some of the, as, as many, I don't want my life to sound tragic. Yeah. Um, but we all have experiences. So fucking many, dude. And it pisses me <laughs> off when people ignore that shit or they'll be like, and they discount them. Dude. Yeah. Well, one dude, when people try to like soften you up, Tracy, dude, I have so much fucking respect for you, dude. Yeah. You're raising a beautiful family. You're yeah. fucking community leader. You're doing all this in business, but motherfucker, don't try to soften me up. I know what the just, fuck you're yeah, saying. Yeah, just say, what, say what the fuck you gotta say. Oh man, you know me. I'm not racist, man. Like I support everything. I, this this is all fucked up. But Kaepernick, dude, fuck that. Like, what the fuck does that have to even do with anything? Oh, first but of all, but don't you know that he was? How uh, can you not see? He came from a wealthy family, and he's not he's not in the struggle. I, that I mean, so good for him. I posted that, that quote. Kanye said it, dude. Like, yeah, even if you're in the bins, man, you're still a nigga in the right, coop. Like, right, right. Still, still. 100% because I, I deal with it all the time, driving either one of my vehicles, and you still just are who you are. Yeah. You're still going to get looked at that way. Yeah. And I had the conversation with my sons about, I use the Rock as an example, and multimillionaire, highly successful, a lot of charisma, seems like a great guy. And probably any room he walks in, even in Hollywood, people are, of all the stars in that room, they probably attracted to him and run to him. Just because of his stigma and his personality and all these wonderful things about him, but I but I bet there's rooms that he still walks in that he still feels like, well, I'm still just a black man. I'm sure he has not gotten roles because he's because a black yeah, and and still feels like he doesn't quite qualify because at the end of the day, people will try to put you in your place and remind you. It's still real. So real. To, so this is where people fuck up. People have a hard time. One, they want to stand their ground and just be right in something, whether it's relevant or not. Right, and it's okay to be wrong. But right. You stand your ground and want to be right. right. Yeah, and it's like people have such a hard time seeing past their own fucking struggle. Right. You know what I mean? We all have a hard time. But more importantly, people want to associate economic struggle with racial struggle. Mm -hmm. Man, things. I've had to fight and crawl and do everything, that get everything that I've earned and – and, dude, I've been mistreated by police, too. And sure, dude, we all do. Yeah. Like, yeah. all races but do. But it's not and, the same. And, and here's yeah. the thing, dude. If we're talking majority, minority, we're all fucking minorities in this economic game. At the, yeah. For real, for there's, real. There's the 2%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, duh, dude. Duh, you had to earn your shit. Like, duh, you had to, like, work hard. Like, that's a given. Right. That is the baseline. But what people are understanding is that where they started the race and what their baseline is it's just different. off of public perception is just different period. It's just a fucking fact, but they want to get so wrapped up in their own struggle in their, in their own economic place that they can't see past that. And they just have to get, they want to be heard too. We all just want to be heard, but it's like, listen, buddy, you're not hearing what the fuck I'm saying because you don't live this existence. Okay, well, you you don't have an understanding. There's that um, old Irish quote that, you know, it's like, Lord, you know, please turn the hearts. And if you can't turn the hearts, turn their ankles <laughs> so that we may know our enemies by their limp. Yeah. Something to that extent, right? Well, along with that, what I've noticed about those same people is they present themselves um, with certain quotes and one of them being, well, tell me what the government won't allow you to do. Fuck yeah. When was the last? Yeah. Well, what, what won't they allow you to do? Tell yeah. me. Tell me. Yeah. Which a lot if you look from yeah. a cultural standpoint. A ton. And, and it's, it's systematic. And it's systemic and however you want to say it. But it's inbred into the system. Yes. And it takes, it takes a, a unique person, I think, to take a step back and realize that you're not saying, well, what's to me? 
Yeah. You're not complaining. You're just saying, you just got to understand that this thing is here, and I have, to, I have to figure out how to traverse this and how to navigate it. And this is real. It's a real thing. Yeah. And <clears throat> I, I personally don't like the phrase white privilege. I, it, just, it doesn't speak um, in a positive manner to me, but it doesn't make it any less true. Right, you, you, there is certainly privileges. Yeah, and that it's not that you ex- afforded. afforded. Right, it doesn't mean you accepted or that you wanted or that you lobbied for. It's just it's yeah. Somebody else may afford it to you. Yeah. Um. And I'm, and again, I'm not comfortable with the phrase because it's just it does yeah. not the most positive phrase. Like you're pointing a finger at somebody necessarily. Yeah. But I, I think what we do have to realize that it exists and i think it's so important to realize that it exists and when people begin a conversation with something like well tell me what the government won't let you do it's it saddens me and it hurts my heart and it's like man it's like who who are you that you would even that you would say that or you think you have the right to present that to somebody because it's it's my being it's everything about me yeah that i can't do and what i have achieved is in spite of that right and that's what sucks is you're negating my experience that you have no clue about and that you couldn't possibly have any clue about. And that's not to say that even that every black person has a, or every Brown person has a, uh, a worse life than every person with a lighter skin tone. That's not what that means. That's not what that means. It, it means that you, it's just on a whole, you're perceived whole. differently. And, um, <clears throat> like, I had a couple of points I wanted to make, but, w- you know, like, one of them is, like, <sighs> what the fuck was my point? I lost it, Tracy. Think about it. I but lost I'll, it. Like, I'll, I'll share this. Like, I remember and a couple of these things have come up recently, and some of these things you tend to can tend to completely forget. But a couple of quick stories. Uh, one of my friends um, that I grew up with when I lived here, he lived, he said, about a mile away from me in our subdivision. And I asked him, I said, hey, you probably didn't even know this. And we went, we went to the same bus stop every day to go to school. And <clears throat> with being as close as we were, he probably uh, physically, he probably had no clue that this happened to me. Yeah. But I remember cutting my neighbor's yard and um, the group of other neighbors of boys our age um, we're walking up and down the street, calling me every name you can possibly imagine. Nigger, spick, wetback, monkey. And maybe I was in eighth grade. Maybe I was a freshman. Yeah. So probably eighth grade, somewhere around there. Um, which none of this was uncommon to me having grown up in Oklahoma. Right. You know, and my mom drove by first. As I'm cutting our neighbor's yard, they were on vacation. She stopped um, and asked me how, you know, how, how are things going? You doing okay with the yard? Blah, blah told her yes and i told her what was going on and she said okay just be careful yeah because we had an understanding that i wasn't a bully but that growing up as a young black man in oklahoma that you were going to have to defend yourself at times with these things and that's just the nature of it's a very real thing in oklahoma. it was a real Which thing brings me I'll keep going yeah. but I, I got my point again i was hoping you would <laughs> that it was an absolute real thing and you're going to have to handle it and you have to grow up and be a man about it yeah so my my dad 10 minutes later drives by honks the horn waves goes home and then five minutes later comes my dad back down the street in the car rolls down the window's like you want me to go over there with you i'm like no i'm good he's like okay be careful and drove home and i can't imagine the position that my parents are in and to have to be in the house and sit and wonder and think and go okay hope we raised him correctly so we know he's not going to start a fight but i hope he comes home but i hope he comes home for real but also knowing that i had to I had to I had to traverse that myself because i it, it's I had to figure that out you have to you have to it's life and I'm in the situation now I'm going I have to figure it out because I can't allow this to continue because I remember having days in Oklahoma where walking to school and walking home from school people are just throwing rocks at your head <laughs> yeah and you have to figure that out and then one day you bite your bottom lip and you and I always kind of say uh, hands up chin down because you yeah. got to go figure it out yeah and you have to figure it out. And then I remember the day I got sick of it, and I turned around and I, I fought back and punched the guy in the mouth. Well, that was going to be that same kind of thing that day. Yeah. And I remember thinking my first responsibility is this person's yard. As much as I want to go over there right now, I have to take care of this because I got paid to do it and I committed to doing it. And <laughs> sweeping and 
putting a lawnmower up and doing all these things the way you're supposed to do because you have to be disciplined about them. Mm-hmm. And then uh, kind of putting myself together mentally and going, okay, now I've got to walk down the street and um, got to grit my teeth and clench my fists. And I'm going to go to this porch where all the five of these kids are waiting for me. And we're going to have it out and we're going to settle it right now and fighting. And after two of them were down, the three of three of them ran in the house. And I probably shouldn't have gone in the house, but it needed to be solved and finished. So I went in the house and I finished the other three because it had to be solved because I couldn't live another day with living like that. Looking over your shoulder. Looking over my shoulder. Wondering what's going to happen. Yeah. Right. And like what people don't understand is we all have those stories, right? Dude. They're endless. Dude, like. I don't even, like, talk about it or share it a whole lot because, again, to that same point, like, I don't want to live in a negative place. Right, right. And, like, I'm not it a... shapes you. Yeah, and I'm it's not a fucking victim or anything like that. But, man, like, growing up in, P- in Potosi, Missouri, yeah. we had a Klansman. Like, I'm a very little kid, man. Like, we had a Klansman who drove around a truck all the time, and one day it's a, it's a dummy hanging in the back of it. Another day it's a fucking... It's a it's a coffin with the sign that niggers should be in here, not yeah. veterans. You know, he walks around the county fair with a fucking hound dog, like yeah, like it's hunting you and yeah, and like as a grown man, like I know that that, that was a very sad little man. Like sure. I, I know that now, but like at that time, I'm a little kid, and like being my, impacted, dude. My mom, she you know she's white, and she w- made sure that I understood what it means to be black in this world, like. Think thankfully, like when I was in third grade, she made me write like a three page report on black inventors, which got printed in our our local right. newspaper, dude. And like my teacher like uh laminated it and all this right. shit. Like it's important. So she, and but in that research, dude, like I read this fucking book and obviously people are getting lynched and the KKK is a big part of that. And I I watched different things on T V where it's like you know, local boys walking home and two fucking guys who are just out nigger hunting and yep. they picked them up and <laughs> they shoot them and they hang them. And man, there's a lot of times, man, as a kid where in my neighborhood, like it wasn't a big neighborhood, but like I'm in Potosi and like I, I had this fear and like I'm, I'm going home and it's dark and like I'm fucking scared to death of every fucking car that runs up on me because I don't know who is the guy who's out looking for somebody they can pick well, up. Well, maybe this is the thing. Maybe we, maybe we, Maybe we, we didn't intend to do this, but maybe we need to tell more of these stories. Well, we're doing it now. So it's yeah. like, so it's like I, I lived with that fucking fear, dude. And so much so, man, that as a, as a kid, you know, like it, I, I moved to Jefferson City whenever I was like 10, about to be 11, or 11, about to be 12, like in sixth grade. It was 99. And uh, so like as a kid, like before I'm even 10, man, like I was so scared. It was just my mom and me and my other little brother, Adrian. You met Adrian. Yeah. That, dude, like, I'm sleeping with a really, I had a big fucking, like, kitchen knife I slept with, yeah. and my mom didn't even know it. And it's just because, like, I'm afraid of somebody going to break in the house, yeah. you know what I mean? And, like, one night, um, somebody came knocking on the door. It was my uncle, but I didn't know that. And I get up, my mom answers the door, but I get up, I run to the door, and I, have, I grab the knife, and I go to the door. And uh, I'm standing there, and I realize it's my uncle. So it's like, you know, I hide the knife behind, <laughs> I, behind my I, back. Yeah, I get it. I don't want, like, so of course it, you did. And yeah. they're like, what's 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 behind your back? Oh, nothing. What's behind your back? So then my brother Adrian is like, oh, and it has it has a little cardboard sh- sheath on it. He's like, oh, it's this. Grabs the knife by the blade, tries to pull it out of my hand, and I'm holding it. Yeah. Almost cuts, cuts his fucking hand, yeah. thumb off. I'm not, dude. He had to have probably 15 or 20 stitches. Some on the inside. So his whole thumb was hanging off and he's probably three years old. Right. Right. And I mean, you could go a whole lot of ways with like, Oh, I shouldn't have did that. But sure, the but fact the is why. I did that. Cause I was in such fear of somebody like breaking into my house because I'm black. I can remember having these thoughts like, why does this guy fucking hate me? Like I'm a human just like you. Like I'm just darker. Like I couldn't understand it, but that was a very like preventable accident that happened and like so I lived with that right like and that's just one example as a kid I can remember little kids and c- calling me nigger or trying to fight right. with me and you just like brush it off like you just kind you of have no choice you, gotta you have no living. choice you know what I mean and so my brother and I also did the knife thing oh did you oh yeah that's what's funny is these shared experiences and you have no idea we in Oklahoma 
when my parents would leave the house, we went and got knives. He had his specific knife, and I had my specific knife. Yeah. And that's what we did. And I don't know that we ever told our parents that. Yeah. But we carried knives around the house. Yeah. In fear for our lives. Dude, like, and I didn't, I didn't really feel, like, feel, feel in fear of, like, all white people, but I had a very real image and example of somebody who fucking hates me. Right. And that's who was always in my head. And you knew not all white people were bad. You had friends that were white people. You had neighbors. You had... This is going to lead me into what I'm saying. So, like, I can remember also, like, before I moved, uh, we all got, like, let out for an early release. I'm probably in, like, fifth or sixth grade. Probably sixth grade. Because this is... I, I, I started sixth grade in Potosi, and then we moved. And uh, it was an early release, and they allowed us to walk home. I'm walking home, and, like, so everybody's out, and, like... Right. Some kids from the football team were out, and like me being maybe a little asshole, a little kid, and like they all have their football jerseys. Like I'm like, man, we fucking suck. Like and he and dude's like, shut up, black boy, before I call the KKK on you. It scared the shit out of me, bro. Like I called, I had to tell my mom, and like I don't. And she's like, well, do we want to go to the school with this and blah blah blah. And then like I'm in fear of repercussion, like real fear of repercussion. So like I didn't want to have that. Like, I didn't, I don't even think we pursued it, but, like, I definitely let some people fucking know, you know, like, my parents or my mom, but, like, I didn't have this fear of all white people, even so much so, like, Deja and I were talking about this, like, I mean, I'm, I'm mixed, I'm biracial, like, I'm, I'm white and black, just that fucking simple, like, I'm not something super exotic, like, we always joke, I'm racially ambiguous, right, right, right. but, like, Puerto Rican friend, (laughs) right, but, like, with that being said, like, I was raised in a white community, my mom is white. I was raised in a very white area, like area, like <clears throat> there weren't very many black people, and if they were, they were my cousins. You know what I mean? And they actually didn't even Potosi. They live in a little small ass, fucking bomb area called Mineral Point outside of Potosi, where there's a fucking prison. Like that's the only thing people even know the, the area other side for. Of the track, so to speak. Sort of, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, like, you know, w- growing up's hard enough. You're trying to figure out who you are, trying to figure out where you fit in, and then like being biracial, you like you don't know where you're fitting in. Like, in high school, like, one day I'd come in, like, super thugged out. Like, I'm wearing tall tees, and, yeah, and the next day yeah. I'm super preppy. And it's like, oh, you know, one minute I'm black, one minute I'm white. We all joke about it. You know, so you're trying to find your way, you right. know, your, your place. So I say all that because, like, growing up in that community and only mostly seeing white people, like, you don't really know who you identify or where you fall. Like, being biracial, you kind of fall nowhere in a way because there's a lot of – tension amongst black people like you're light you're light skin you're dark skin right. and shit like that yeah there's racism there right so like me dude like uh, it's more recent that i actually identify as black and like I've, i mean i know i'm not white like i've always known i'm not white but i never really identified with, with one black. or the other yeah. right so like that kind of like molds in the like the way you kind of see some things but like realizing I, this is some shit that's just like I've had to like realize through like own self introspection that being raised in that particular community by all white people, I am naturally more comfortable around white strangers than I am black strangers. Makes sense. Like I just am. Right. And, and so I've, I've had to realize that there's been some times to where like I, and I'm guilty of this. Like, I have been in black communities where I've been around black people and I felt more uncomfortable subconsciously, not because I wanted to or that I don't like love people that look like me or like it's exposure. It's exposure and it's understanding. And it's also like, there's all of these other things, whether it's TV, these it's, it's um, like you're unconsciously being programmed. So it's like what Deja and I are saying, like when these cops are saying that they're in fear for their life, they really are in fear because they have this deep seated like fear of the un we're all we're all tribal we want to be around people that are like us whether you know this behavioral or sure. most commonly what it looks like on the surface but it's like these cops have these unconscious fears that are even deeper than they realize they may not know that they're afraid of this thing right it's like right. you know whenever you look on the news you know the black victim is is, or the black person, or whatever the, the where they fall in the story, it's a mugshot, you know. And it's, yeah. and it's the white guy. It's oh, he's such a he's such a good guy. Let me give a real nice family picture of that right, guy or right, something. Right. So we're being conditioned, and for one reason or another, and it's like I had to go through. I'm thirty, I'm about to be thirty three, and it's like 
and, and some of this is even just like more recent like things I'm uncovering about myself. You know what I mean? It's just like it's it's fucked up, man. Like it's beyond. It's super yeah. fucked up. And but, and but you're realizing it and that's good. Right. You know what I mean? It's like now as a father and with all this shit going on, it's like, dude, I am a black man and like I'm I'm raising a black man and like and daughter and it's fucking scary to think about like having certain conversations with them and to think that, you know, they have to go out there. And fortunately, I feel like AJ has the temperament where I don't fear him losing his shit around some people. Right. You know what I mean? Out of feeling like unjust. But you don't have to lose your shit, we found out, no, to get killed. No, don't have to. Right? You can be respectful and be put in that situation. Right? And then we tell these stories and we share our experiences and people are like, yeah, but what can't you do now? Or things are, dude, things are, in human history now is better than ever. Like things are great. Like we've made progress. Like we've we've come a long way. But then when you start sharing these experiences and these these realities, it makes people uncomfortable and people feel guilty. And well, nobody wants to feel like when you're a little kid, dude, or even in relationships, you don't want your fucking spouse to sit there and tell you about the wrong shit you did right. a year ago. Yeah, it feels bad. Nobody wants nobody to wants that. to feel that, but yeah. they feel that. But this is what you guys need to understand. Like we're not directing it at you, but if you look at the vast scope of what's happening here, like Oklahoma. Black Wall Street. Tulsa, right. Tulsa, Oklahoma, man. Like, history books don't even talk about that, but no, it was such a, a flourishing thing. And in one or two days, it was completely Done. fucking torn Burned down. down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I just read something the other day, dude. 62 years ago, this is 1958, there was a guy who applied for the master's program at the University of Mississippi. But no, no black person has ever even applied for admittance at that time to the university. He was... He was uh he was uh he was uh institutionalized into an insane asylum by a judge because how would a black person ever do this? This is sixty two right. years had to ago. Be crazy to think he could get in. He there. could get in. Wow. So it and it took a lawyer his lawyer brother to get him out after almost two weeks. Well, so how recent is that? Like people want to think this is so far away. This is hundreds of years and a hundred years in the grand scheme ain't shit. Can you do? Um in your show notes, can you put pictures? Different, yeah, you can. You can do pictures. Put links in different things. Yeah, I'll share a, a picture with you um, of my mom and her sisters from the the fifties, from a uh, several from like boycotts and from. Your mom was probably segregated as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Just in in some of the conversations we've had with the kids had to start with that. You have to start with this is what's happened and these with the people that you love. And everybody knows history, but oftentimes when you <clears> – <throat> here's a picture that was in a newspaper of your mom and her sisters sitting at a uh, a, um, a counter at a, uh, a soda fountain place, whatever they called them, and the sign that says, you know, black's not allowed or white's only fountain or black fountain or, you know, <clears throat> like when I saw it and I knew the stories, it just still hits you – Different. Hits you different, yeah. you know. Um it just makes a, a, a larger impact. <clears throat> or I had somebody say to me yesterday, like, don't you think it's time we celebrate this country? I'm like, this is the best country in the world. There's no there's no debate it's not perfect, ab about but that. It's but it is not it's not it's not a debate and it's not perfect. Well let's start celebrating the fact and that talk no, but that doesn't change my experiences and how you may not want to hear this or admit it, but it doesn't change what I have to deal with. Right. I'm not putting that on you, but you also need to be aware of that. Um, and I can't, I can't begin to <clears throat> applaud or be thankful for the number of people that have said the most positive things and have been impacted. Right. Um, I had uh, one of my high school friends who... Facebook can be a beautiful thing. It can also be a horrible thing. Right. But having been a person that moved a lot, it's also made me a lot closer to people that I was friendly with, but not as close with over right, the years. Right. And I have a, a, guy, a guy from high school I play football with. He's amazing, and I've developed a great relationship with he and his wife as we've become adults even more so. Yeah. And he brought up an incident when we were in high school at a football game <clears throat> and, a and at a rival high schools that was, we're talking 50 minutes outside Chicago. And this town was known for its racist behavior and overtones, and just it's it's. Uh, we had a <clears throat> uh, one of our one of my teammates who ended up playing at University of Northwestern. It was uh, African American, 
We're going to veer to the sidelines. And the whole game was chippy and the negativity coming from the sidelines and the horrible words being used finally came to a head and their head coach. I remember I remember not only in my head do I see the actual event in the play, but I also see the film that I've watched a million times. So I see them both. And I remember the veer heading toward their sidelines. And as my friend is getting up off the ground, their coach dropping an end bomb on him their head coach and then him getting up and walking you know three steps and he looks back and, and replies to him and with i'm sure nephew you know high school kid right. senior i'm grown ass man bro grown ass, you up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, he ended up wrestling and pulling playing football so he probably Western. really would fuck him so, so yeah so he you know there's no question he uh finally got sick of it and replied and then he turned and said it and then all of a sudden as he takes two more steps you see their bench clear Mm. And chase him. Um, and as he runs toward our sidelines, our sidelines meet them. And it was us against them. And it was to think, my friend said, it just, he goes, I never put myself in your position. He goes, it was just a crazy story for me to tell. He goes, but I never thought about how it, how it affected you or my other teammates. Because he, was, he wasn't. He didn't fear for his life no, because of that. Right. It wasn't even a thought. And he, and not that he was in a great situation or any of them by any stretch of my, I mean, we're all kids. Well, everything could have went bad everything for everybody. Everything could have went bad for everybody. But we're in this small, podunk town, white, black, Hispanic, and everything in the middle. And it could have went wrong. We're kids. Yeah. And, our pa- and parents in the stands that are recording, their parents had to be mortified. Um, but it was definitely a us against this entire town. Right. And, this, and he was in danger, but he goes, it still affected you differently and he goes, I never thought about that fact. And I remember my knee was hurt and I was on crutches in that game. And I remember being in the middle of the field with crutches, swinging a crutch. Yeah. And just smacking people with crutches. While my other teammates just like are hemming up coaches and players. And I mean, can you imagine that? Like you're a senior Dude. and you're beating a coach from another team. It's crazy. Or a junior, just a high school kid. Yeah. And then with the police came and they had to stop the game. We never finished the game. And I remember – them ushering us to the locker room. And I, this felt, I felt like, this is what I felt like the day that the story came about, about the Central Park guy, then the guy on the knee, the cop on the guy's neck. Like, I felt that same way where I felt so hopeless and so angry and so mad. And I remember standing outside the locker room and just screaming at the angry mob. Yeah. It's, it's the locker room they were in. The whole team's inside the locker room. I wouldn't go in because I was so mad and we had one coach like out there with me to make sure I didn't get burned at the stake and then our bus and then the entire town uh, these adults screaming God knows what at a 16 or 17 year old kid and I, I like I can't bring myself to go in I'm so livid and mad that, that it came to this yeah it came to that and there was no bravery probably a whole lot of stupidity it just sickened yeah that it came to that. And guess what? It's not unique, right? No, man. I mean, that's the thing is it's not unique. It's not. I've had, I had a fight here in Podoc, somewhere in Missouri. Um, and it was, uh, I think, Kyle Cayley. Or mm-hmm. was it? Was it Cayley? It was, no, it was it was John Mankey and Alan Smith cornered me. And uh, and I and I, I beat the shit out of the guy, and he's a super nice guy. We actually kind of are friendly now. And but like people weren't happy i beat him right and you know what i mean and like we kind of joke about it but it's like oh man like we barely got out of there right but it's like there's some truth to that too i've had those where i was <laughs> not going out there by myself and i was like i'm not going out there by myself you guys got to come and and mike went out with me and and we probably traveled 10 or 12 deep and, and to me what was the middle of nowhere i'm like i'm not going out there by myself to fight and under this tent yeah, it's you like, know, like the, <laughs> the, the crowd gets drunk. Yeah. And, you know, things start, you know, emotions start flying, right. dude. I fear for my life, and I'm going to be fighting this guy with, yeah. you know, four-ounce gloves. Right, so and I, it's like, know. while we joke about it, there's truth there. There's truth in it. Man. Right. Uh, I've been chased through, I posted this a couple of years ago, chased through the mall, you know, and uh, where I grew up in Aurora. And I remember some, when I said it one day, somebody said, well, well why did you run? And I'm like, you know, you shouldn't have ran. That's your fault. Well, 
I don't know why the uh, security guard is screaming my name. Screaming, I'm sorry, it wasn't even my name. He's screaming at me. And as I'm coming down the escalator, I'm looking at him like, who are you talking to? You're not talking to me. And I keep looking back, trying to figure out, you're not talking to me and just so confused. And Because um, I'm just, you know, they're minding your own business. Right. And then some guy's screaming at you in the uniform, and you don't understand why because he's not saying your name. So I just kept walking and kept walking. And right. Next thing you know, the guy starts trotting, and I start trotting out of confusion. He starts running. I start running out of confusion. And that's how people get shot. So, hey, I got people telling me later. Why'd you run? Well, why was I be- getting chased? And why would I stand there when some guy's running at me and I don't understand what's going on? Right. And I swear to God, my natural instinct was run in the first place where I see a bunch of black people. Yeah. Run in a place that I see people that look like me because maybe I'll be safe. Yeah. I'll run in there and I'll stop. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. Then I got thrown against the wall. And then it's, why did you run from me? I was calling your name. Like, you didn't call my name. My name is such and such. She was, no, you're, this is who you are. Let me see your ID. I'm like, that's not me. And then I give the guy an ID. And, I mean, there's a difference in shade between you and I. But this dude was at least five shades darker than me. Yeah. And probably eight inches taller than me. Yeah, dude. Uh, well, like, I'm not him. Like, the problem is you, you fit the description. The description is a black guy in a quote-unquote puffy coat. Get the fuck out of yeah, here, dude. Well, yeah. There's a million black people. Yeah. And, I, and my coat's what a What does ca- that mean? My coat's a Canada goose. So, I don't, you know, that ain't the same coat. Right. You know, get off. It's I, like, it's... It, it's it's fucking crazy, you know what I mean? Like you see it in movies. You know, I, I went down this conspiracy theory the other day with talking to Skylar. I'm not uh-huh. gonna go on this tangent, but like, I really do believe that there's a lot of uh, truth in movies that um, get put in there to kind of like like numb people to it. Sure. And how many times in movies have you seen where like they kill somebody or they do something crazy? And you're like, oh, we'll just blame it on a black guy. And, oh, and, happens all the time. And and that does happen all the time in real life. But if you tell that to somebody, they'll be like, no, it doesn't happen. Central Park 5, uh, you ever seen the movie Rosewood? Yeah. That, which my, I remember watching that and trying to get my grandmother to watch it. And she was like, N- absolutely not. I lived, I, she, that she happened lived in her lifetime. Yeah. She was like, I'm not. No. I watch that shit. She didn't want to watch it. And she was like staunch about like that was real. That yeah. happened. I'm not. Central Park 5 is real. It happened. Um, I gave another example the other day. Uh, it, I mean, it, it, I had somebody joke. I, I shouldn't even say jokingly. They weren't joking, and they made a comment about why the guy in uh, Central Park had the dog treats, and that was the issue. Like, There's always an issue. It's like, but that's. I mean, don't. I, I don't even know how to respond right now. Like, are you serious? Like. Like, in my head, I didn't even know he had dog treats, but immediately I'm like, well, that makes sense to me because if you're in a place like that where people, the law is you're not you're supposed to have your dog on a leash and it happens all the time, um, well, if I don't want to get bit by a dog, I might be smart enough to carry dog treats in my pocket get to make fuck away from get them me. away from me. So, I, I mean, that you, oh, so you're playing chess <laughs> and not checkers? Problem, and, yeah. Yeah, and problem the, solved. And the people want to call him a Karen. Right, because That's exactly what he said, and it's, and it's like, well, I I I tend to uh, to kind of operate live and let live, and mm-hmm. I'm not a big confrontational guy, and you know, I may or may not say something to somebody, but like, if the rules are the fucking rules, and from my understanding, this particular area of the park is it's strictly for bird, bird watching. watching. There's over 230 species or some shit, right. and this guy's a regular bird watcher, and there's signs everywhere, and I haven't, I and haven't checked. Here, because you're gonna get right, bit. and I haven't checked the validity of this, but apparently, like, she's been cited multiple times for this kind of same issue. I didn't know that. It's, yeah, who knows? Right, you know, you know right. what I mean? But well, I hadn't heard that. I right, heard that way. but like, if if the rules are the fucking rules, and from what I can tell, he sounded, I mean, he stayed calm the whole time, so it's sure. like, I can only probably draw from what happened on camera was, it, based off that, was that he probably, at least calmly, asked her to put her fucking dog on a leash. Sure. In which case, then she lost her shit. Right. Why? What are her motivations for losing her shit? I don't know. It could have been because she just didn't want to be told what to do by a black man. It could have been that she just didn't want to be told by any person. It could have been she was having a bad day. It could have been she had a fucking and bad day. And she made day. a very bad decision. Which went but it was very deliberate. And, and as somebody said, she weaponized her whiteness at that moment. 
Absolutely. And then she tries to say that she didn't understand what she was doing. It was socio- sociopathic, and she knew exactly what she was doing, and it was relevant. She threatened him. I'm going to call the police and tell them an African. I don't even like the term African American. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it. Like, we're so PC. Like, yeah. He's black. <sighs> he's black. Like, yeah. I mean, I get it. Sure. Um, a lot of a lot of us come from Africa. Like, well, everybody comes from Africa, right? right like, right, we're all right, we all right, originate right. from Africa. Is yeah. what I'm saying. But like, I'm not African. I don't. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I. It's like Africans don't even like black don't people. Like, in I was gonna say that. They don't even like you. They don't like even that. like black people yeah. in America. Like the public, Like so, at a certain <laughs> point, like, why are we still calling? Us African Americans, right. even like that, doesn't even make hey, sense. See that to dude me. in that lime green shirt walking the street? Oh, he's from Africa. Yeah. <laughs> he's, from, <laughs> like, he's not black, black. He's from Africa. Yeah, it's right. like yeah, that. Yeah. That is a dividing thing. Yeah, it can be. You know what sure. I mean? I, I think people try to use that as a very like, like a non, you know, like fucked up way to address people, but it's fucked up. When, it's, it's called black. You're white. I'm black. Cool. I, I, that's when I my heart. As if the the first incident, not the number of uh, the knee in the neck wasn't enough that day. That's the one I saw first, <clears throat> and I believe for me, I thought that the other video popped up first with uh, the guy in the park. True. Yeah. But but I didn't have I I couldn't. I was so busy dealing with the one I couldn't get to the other. Nor did I have the, the capacity or the yeah. energy to get to the second one, and it was honestly probably six to eight hours later before I was able to bring myself to even look. But I, I'd seen enough posts that I knew there was something else that I needed to investigate enough to know myself rather than just what I was reading from the people. Right. Because I was going to have to address it with my kids. And um, I, I, my, my heart hurt so bad. And I, I had, you know, you, we, we talked earlier about how I was up. You know, yeah. like posting, uh, like Payne Tracy commented on this four hours ago, and that was yeah. whatever time. Yeah. Uh, but my, and Michelle asked me, like, why are we up? And I was, the only answer I honestly had was my soul was restless. Dude. And I, and I felt heartbroken. And in some way, I don't know, I don't. I hate to have to weigh one versus the other, which was which was worse. Maybe the second, maybe the, the video of the guy in the park with the woman, with the dog, maybe that was just the straw that broke the camel's back a little more. I don't know. Um, so perspective being what's worse, watching him die, which we all did on video. We watched somebody literally die. What, yeah. But what's worse, that or seeing people defend the actions of a guy that we all watched die? I don't know which broke my heart more. Or was it knowing potentially that those are my sons or your son easily in that park when that woman decided to weaponize what she had and said those key words that she knew were trigger words to possibly ruin that man's life or to get him killed. And, um, you know, the ESPN analyst, former analyst, Camilla, I forget her last name at this point, her, her tweet was, you know, what happened to the, and I forget all the names and I apologize for that. Um, uh, we'll have the George Floyd is what, Something, something. What she ha- wishes had happened. happened to the guy that she called yeah, the They actually had on. the same last name. Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I think in Cooper. the beginning, I was like, what, what, what? Yeah. I think something Cooper, maybe. Yeah. Um, that rattled me. Because uh, it's true. Because it's so true. But to see it. To, I actually don't. actually see it? To see it unfold, to see him die in front of us, and to see her. I don't. I don't know which one's worse. Well, women it, like her are the reason why we had Emmett Till. Yeah, Med Grabbers. The names can the just keep Central fucking Central Park go- Five. The names can just fucking keep going, dude. Right? Rosewood. It's like you just place the blame on somebody. You know what I mean? That you know is an easy scapegoat because you don't want to take responsibility, or you have some sort of ego-driven thing to where you feel like you need to win or be right. I right. mean, right. you know e- that woman from. You know, all those years ago with Emmett Till, like on her deathbed, she admitted she, she was finally li- admitted it, she yeah. she was lying. A little yeah. boy lost his fucking life. Those pictures are horrible. Yeah, it's god awful, dude. It's horrible, and that's that constant. And, but that's constant fear. what people don't. That is the exact it's real. same thing, except Emmett Till didn't have a fucking camera phone. Yeah, and, and then you know you. How confident do you feel in an interaction with law enforcement if you just get randomly pulled over? It's scary, dude. And for you to just go, hey, Adam, talking to yourself, I'm going to 
take my phone out and record this. How confident do you feel? How comfortable do you feel just doing that? And also, well, uh, does that action escalate the situation? That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. People don't realize, like, you have us as black people or just any person of color, we have certain realities and thoughts that certain people don't have to think about. You know, two years ago, Deja and I were driving down to Austin. We got pulled over. It's probably six in the morning. It's dark. White guy pulls us over. And, like, I've never really been scared of being, like, killed by the cops. Like, I've never really had that issue or that thought process. But with everything going on in the world, I did have a brief thought of, like, it was fast. But I'm just like, and he was cool. He gave me my ticket. Yeah. We moved on. He was cordial. It was all right, fine. But right. it was what like, business? I still had that thought, like, fuck, what if he loses his shit? You'd be ignorant not to consider it. And, and shoots me and Deja here or, you know, and it's like, or. What and that's if, not his fault necessarily. What if they it's mistake the, my yeah. fanny pack for something? Oh, I better have my ID and my insurance here and I, and I better know where it's at. I better not rummage for that shit. Right. But I okay. better have it ready. So what do you do? Do you have it ready when he comes to the car? Because maybe he sees you behind, he's behind you and he sees you looking. But in your thought, you're thinking, I just want to have it out and have it ready for him. Or do you wait till he gets to the car and say? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I already yeah. think about that. It's like I, exactly I have point. it. Yeah. I have it in a place where I don't have to look for it. It's just like boom, boom. Right. So that way he doesn't see a lot of movement. You know what right. I mean? And like, how many people think about like, dude? Like, I fucking you actively try to give off a non-threatening presence. Yeah. Have you ever thought about like? Do, kid, pe- do people think about me? that? Like, <laughs> you know, right. yeah. Well, I know, I know you yeah. know that. It's it's more like in the general, but it's like. But think about. Do that. they think about that? Like, right. I, I I know I've dude. Last week, I I was at the gym. I'm in there. I'm up there teaching six a.m. class. I'm taking out the fucking trash. The people. I don't want to say which business they are in the same building as us because I don't think they're bad people. However, it's two white, one, a guy and a girl, and. You know, they're already at the trash can throwing shit away by the time I get there. Right. I'm walking up. I'm friendly. Hey, how's it going, guys? They don't say anything. I throw away my trash. One, I don't like people walking behind. I don't like walking behind people anyway because, one, yeah. I walk fast, and they're in my fucking way. Right. And then, two, they're walking slower than I'm walking. But now I have to walk even slower because I don't want to approach them. And then and think then, that. And then, yeah. But here's the thing. I can still see this bitch. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Sorry. Yeah. I still see her. Kind of looking back. Looking over her shoulder. And then, like, then they need to kind of, like, cut to their left to, like, go to their door. So then, like, I cut even wider right. But she crosses left faster as I'm going right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just, like, that's fucking real. That's happened. I can remember walking All out of fucking Walmart. Old white lady. Several fucking, you know, like, she's several cars in front of me. Scared. I'm in high school. Like, these are real fucking things that people don't think about. I, and so I actively try to give off. I'm smiling. And right, you know, right, I try to give off this non-threatening, you know, and it's just like, it's one of those things that you just accept. And I never and thought anything about to. it. Yeah. And I don't feel victimized because of that. But if you really analyze it, that's fucked up. You shouldn't. Completely. <laughs> and I, that's I, the things people don't think about. The, the exact same situations. I remember being <clears throat> in, uh, in Naperville and being at a, uh, uh, a grocery store and the woman in front of me as she she looks back as she looks at me and then she takes her purse and puts it across her body and uh i just remember thinking uh, you know like as we walk out and she looks back as she tucks, tucks her stuff in and then as we walk out she takes her purse and puts it across her body and i'm thinking i'm the one that's going to help you like if something were to literally happen here I'm going to help you. I'm the, I'm the one that you don't have, not the one as in the black person, but the person right. that's going to help you. And I just like, remember my heart just being a little broken that somebody did that. Or, I mean, but we also understand like self-preservation. So I understand being in the parking lot and you locking your door, but yeah. why did you wait till I walked out to lock your door? Or, like you don't think I didn't see you acting funny. Yeah. When I entered the picture. Or, or we're in a mall and it's full of people. And as, I'm waiting by the escalator for my friends because it's like, hey, where do you meet? Oh, just meet me by the escalator. I'll be right there. Lady coming down the escalator and she takes her purse again and puts it across her body. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm 16 years old, <laughs> and I'm just in a mall like you're in a mall hanging out, and now you you put your purse across because you drew a line in the sand. Yeah, right, right. And and again, back to the guy that I went to high school with that reminisced on that one event and how it affected me differently. Well, 
we were all in the malls at that age. And his experience, I guarantee you, was completely different than my experience. In that oh, mall. yeah. Yeah. And that's not to say that there wasn't crime and there wasn't other things happening or that Aurora didn't have its issues. But I'm a person. Right. And what I had to deal with, the same as what we're talking about, was we have to plan when we get into the vehicle. Where's our ID going to be? Where's your insurance going to be? Where are all those things going to be so you can make the least amount of movements possible? Um, or even if... We've talked about concealing and carrying or having a firearm. Right. You know, and, you know, you, I ask our friends at the gym, like, what makes you most comfortable as law enforcement? Do you want me to ask, tell you first, uh, sir, I have a firearm in the vehicle. Do I not mention it at all because it has nothing to do with this interaction? Right. Um, what puts you most at ease? You're in charge. This is your show. And when I had that conversation with just one of uh, my other friends and other students in the gym that's not in law enforcement, um, he's like, man, I never really thought about the fact that you have – that in Missouri, you don't have to have a license to – To carry. To carry. Yeah, right, we, we have constitutional yeah, carry here. Right. But I feel like I need to have – my license to conceal and carry, which you can still get, obviously. Right, and, you, and honestly, if you are going to carry, if you want to carry around the United States, you yeah. should. You should, yeah, absolutely, you should. We have one of the most widely recognized concealed carries in the, right. in the country. And and just the fact that you, um, what, I have you mine. Have, what you have to go through to get that license makes you um, more comfortable. It makes you, I mean, it's like right. you got to get fingerprints, you got to yeah. do a background check, you got to right. go through a course. Sure. You and the course being maybe the most important thing because you can you can carry that weapon with confidence and with responsibility. Right. But on the other side of that, you feel like you have to, as a man of color, go, hey, look, I'm legal. I've got this thing, even though I have a constitutional right. Right. And I think people take that for granted often when they say, it's an amendment that says I can do this. Well, no, it's your amendment. It's not necessarily. Yeah, they didn't my write the Constitution amendment. with black people in mind. We weren't even a full person. At the time, they at did. That time. Parts of it they did. Parts of it, yeah. yeah. Those were additions. <laughs> Those, yeah, no, it was that you're not a full person. Oh, yeah. That part they did. Yeah, yeah. that part they did. And it's like people don't, like Dej and I are talking about this because I posted um, that long uh, kind of uh, post by a guy who was a, a professor uh -huh. and he was approached by officers a couple years ago he's uh -huh. on his way to lunch yeah and, that was you know he has to ask is it okay if i if i reach in my pocket to get out my wallet meanwhile you know for some reason people can't see the stark differences is like okay well i have to ask to reach into my pocket to show you id or the fact that he had a fucking lanyard around his neck already or, that said he was a or, university or professor. last time i checked this is a free fucking country why'd i have to tell you where i'm coming from like i thought we were innocent until proven right. guilty did you drive here or like bitch. puffy jacket right oh, this is a polo uh dress coat and it's you know it's like right so it's like people don't think about like well you have to ask for permission so then you take that to the constitution and you know first amendment second amendment you know right to carry and you know, pretty recently in Michigan, there were the protesters going up there with their fucking guns and shit like that. But if I don't know how anybody can argue that if that were a group of black protesters, that wouldn't have been different because we have we have peaceful protests that turn violent for one reason or another. But even if before they turn violent, you have the police officers like macing people right, and, and right. smoke bombing people and and doing all this shit. But that never would. And I saw a picture today, dude. It's like there was a cop addressing a guy with a gun. The guy's gu hand is on his gun, and the cop's hand is nowhere near, near his, his gun. gun. He's here. But different conversation with me. Goes and, differently. And I don't understand why just, be, why just because people feel like a good majority of cops are good that you still negate that shit. Because that is fucking right. happening over and, and over. over. And, like the response is are different and let's be clear like a lot of people i posted that picture and a lot of people felt like i didn't agree with no i agree with their right to carry and to express their freedom i think that's absolutely fine he's doing fine i think the cops probably handling that well but Very the problem well. is they only handle it well with white people it right. seems like and and i believe in your right to to protest and your right to stick up for yourself and express your opinion and speak freely I just know that goes differently for me. It does. And and that's the conversation people don't want to have. And people think when you post that picture and you post, especially you post a picture of the guys with the rifles and you post a picture of Kaepernick on a knee and then now the cop on his knee, they take issue and go, well, this guy, uh, he's not standing for you or kneeling for you. He's, and he's from this 
environment where he's, you know, he was given things and this and that. Well, no, but I don't care if he was adopted by a white family or not. I don't care if he's your skin tone or not. The fact is, regardless of what suburb he grew up in, what do we say about the coop? Well, the coop, you know, Kanye. You still oh, you still nigga in the coop, man. Yeah, still he's still coop. black in America. He's still black in America. Yeah, it doesn't man. matter how privileged you in your reality, in your reality, isn't his reality. Right. Just because he may have grown up, and I'll just throw out a place. I'll just throw out Naperville, or. Or, you know, Schaumburg, places out Boulder, or, Colorado. Or, right. Or <laughs> Ellisville or Chesterfield. In some ways, that makes the experience worse because there's not people that look like you that can represent you, and you are a complete minority in that area. And, and who's it, to say that growing up, he, okay, say growing up, he didn't experience it. Right. But when he got in the real world, he did. Yeah. I told, I, man, I told my sons that all the time. Like when, maybe, he goes, when he went to college, he did. I guarantee you did. I told him all the time, like, maybe these things aren't happening to you right now. And I don't want to wish evil on you, but I need you to be aware of it so it's not such a shock when you do enter the real world that these things happen to you. I want you to be prepared. And this has nothing to do with the person that you are. Yeah. But I'd be I'd be ignorant of me as a parent to not let them be not the same reason they train jujitsu and my daughter, because I want them to be prepared. Prepared. I hope you never have to never, use I hope it. you never have to do this, but just in case. You need it. Just in case. That'd yeah. be that's the same thing that got you know, nobody we've all been We've all seen that young lady uh, drink a little bit too much mm-hmm. and not have control of her faculties. And, and you go like, oh, my God, I hope that's not my daughter. And let me treat her with respect and help this young lady. You know, you just yeah. you're preparing her. Yeah, man, 100%, yeah. dude. And it's, 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 it's I, I don't get how people can make those things and say, well, he, he, he didn't come from this urban area. He lived here, so he's not I – mean, that didn't change that he's black, that? Yeah, man. That, yeah. that, that's possibly worse. Makes yeah. him more of a target. Might have made him, yeah, might do a little bit of a disservice to that guy. Yeah. We, I've lived, uh, I've seen every side of life, and we didn't grow up with a whole lot. And then we, my parents uh, had the ability to move us in Oklahoma from uh, one area to the small town that was literally two sides of the train track. And we were a handful of the black kids in the white school, and we got rocks thrown every day and called every name in a book every day and you had to deal with that had to deal with it as opposed to maybe you lived in an inner city and you had to deal with that too just because it was the environment yeah and you had to fight either way sometimes but which is worse you know like it maybe if you're around people that look like you at least you know there's a certain amount of respect right for you right and you're fighting for different reasons as opposed to people just that dislike you because of the color of your skin and nothing else right Right. Nothing else. And it's like, <clears throat> I just, you know, you see things where there's blatant, like, mass murder hate crimes, and those dudes get brought in on handcuffs. Yeah, I was going to get to that, like the Dylan Roof picture, right. and then, like, and, I and they protect the name yeah. in the church. Right, and then they protect them with a fucking a vest, and they take them to Burger King afterwards, yeah. and you have nonviolent things happening, and those guys are dying yeah. for selling cigarettes, for writing uh, supposedly. Bad checks. It wasn't right. even a bad check, right? right? So it's like things aren't being handled so, correctly, yeah. and people want to ignore that for some reason. And it's like, all right, well, how do we fucking change that? I mean, like, there has to be something we can do. Like, I feel like, you know, annual psych evaluations, 100%. Like, why is why can't we make the minimum age to be a police officer 25? When your brain is actually fully developed yeah. and you can start making some rational decisions and you're not as volatile and maybe your ego is hopefully a little bit in more check oh, at man. that time, <laughs> um, you know, better training. You know, I was talking to somebody at the gym the other day and they're like, you know, at the very least, a lot of these uh, precincts and things could maybe offer like a stipend. For absolutely. So that way these people can afford jujitsu or something. And that doesn't, but it, and even if they didn't. I don't think most are going to take advantage of it because most gyms will give you a discounted rate or, right. or some sort. We all will. Right. We've so, but if you it. get a discount and a stipend, yeah, right, it's there's, free. There's, there's no excuse. Or you might right? make money off of training. Right. But that being said, the, the the guys at our gym will tell you most people don't come train because of the ego, because they don't want to lose in the gym because it makes them feel differently on the streets. Right. Well, who cares? Right. Well, it would benefit everybody, right? Like right. if 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 they did. But um, he was saying that, uh, well, you know, it's, 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 you can't 
require it and you can't make them do it because it's, you know, there's off duty. It's when they're not at work. But I almost would like to argue that, not almost, I would like to argue that if, if that is the field that you want to go into, then it's not a job it's a lifestyle and maybe you don't have to be you know on 24 7 where you're constantly policing people but your lifestyle needs to reflect Reflect that that. career decision and that requires you to train outside of we started unquote work how to we started our conversation with that when we were talking about this time off and right maybe being a little heavier than we want to be right and we were saying that the thing that pushes us back in line with that is our lifestyle jiu-jitsu and being i mean are you or neither one of us are getting paid completely to live that lifestyle, but it's right. a lifestyle and we let it kind of bring us back into what we need to be. But I don't know about you, but my corporate America job tells me, uh, well, this is some continued training you need to do and you need to do it on your own time. Right. And so I think you can require it. As a personal it. trainer, you have to do it. As a doctor, you have, <laughs> you have to, to do it. it. Yeah. So it's like, why can't you, you can. require that? You it's can. like, hey, you want to be a police officer? Guess what, guys? There's going to be additional training that you need to do outside, and it's called jujitsu. By right. the way, you're going to fucking love it. So right. let's just not right. bitch and let's do it. Right. It, it's, it's like, why can't we require that? What negative is going to come from it? Nothing. That's more than a job. It's right. not just it's a fucking yeah. job. At the end of the day, you and if you look at it as yeah. such, you shouldn't be fucking doing it. Nothing bad comes from it. And let, let me let me put it in a more positive way. Uh, and I truly believe this. And it's not just spin. Uh, law enforcement has a crap job. It's a hard job. It's damn near impossible. It, man, it's it's because it's you, scary. We've, we've talked about this. Dude, have you ever thought how people feel scared making a phone call? Or making a sales call for the yeah. first time. Imagine making a traffic stop. Right. You don't know what's going to what happen. What the fuck, dude? And, and it would. You, oh my god. You don't get any calls. You know, nobody ever gets a call like, "Hey, uh, this is Adam, and I'm going to propose to Deja, uh, and I want you to be witness to this." You don't get those kind <laughs> of. You don't calls. get those calls. Those aren't the calls you ever get. It's never going to be anything good. And so many good guys show up. Period. And still do the job and still try to connect with people and make it a positive experience. So we know it's a low percentage of the ones that, that, that are the issue, but it's never anything good. Yeah. And if you can take a class or train an art or change your lifestyle and it's going to help you get home safely to your family, and even if it's help you get home with less injuries or, or it's the same as wearing a body camera, so what? Back to you having a camera. You're turning on your phone. Is it gonna make? I don't care if you turn your phone on record because I've got this body camera on me. Yeah. And I've got to trust in my heart as the person that I am, Tracy Taylor, that it's gonna be above board our interaction. So what do I care if you turn yours on too? Right. What yeah. do I care? This is already recording it. Yeah. And I know the person that I am. And you turn yours on, this is going to reflect the same thing. The video so, protects everybody. Everybody. If you have an issue with it, you probably have something to hide. Absolutely have something to hide because you've got one on anyway. Right. And right. that's well, welcome to the world we live in. And if you feel like you need to protect that, then there's something going on. But now I can take this art that makes me feel more comfortable. So now my first reaction isn't going to be right to my, my, my firearm, my sidearm. And even as a, a person that, carries one it's not my first reaction to grab one because i know within 15 feet well good luck to you getting yours out you're never going to make it you're never going to get yours before i get to you and i'd much rather feel like i have control of the person than myself be tied to this whether it be a knife or a gun or whatever the weapon is now i'm tied to it and what we know is anytime you introduce a weapon it's it's exponentially more dangerous exponentially for both parties involved so now i get to go home safe right now maybe you get locked up but you go home with maybe just, you know, your little sore and it gets sorted out and worked out, but you get to go home to your family. Right. Or try it in the in the in the way you should be tried, whatever the case may be. But we both live this to tell the story another day. Right. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay for me to go home safe. It's okay for me just to have a sore knee versus have to sit in who knows how many hours of meetings and trials and people wondering whether or not I could have done things differently because we've all seen videos of when a cop doesn't have uh, any training and when a cop does have training and how much smoothly it goes and you're like man that dude immediately put that person there put him there put him in a I hate hearing well uh, the assailant was so much bigger than them and they bow <laughs> well dude have you seen my weight class yeah, <laughs> shut, yeah. Your, shut your mouth I've been training with Noah he's, oh, he's 300 he's plus pounds eight men 
He's eight men. He's a different human. He, that is my weight class. Yeah. And and so don't tell me about somebody being larger than you and height. Well, you should have trained then. Yeah. And I'm not saying that your lives are on the line. And I don't mean to be disrespectful by that, but you might feel slightly differently if you decided to train yourself to ensure that you came home safely more than just the range. Well, control builds confidence. Absolutely. And the more control you feel of an outcome or a potential situation, the more confidence you have and the calmer you are. Right. I, I, and that's, a, that's everything right there. It's no different than approaching a woman. Right. I want everybody to come home safe. And I don't want to have to preface good cop, bad cop. That's, I mean, I've, we've all been in those situations. I feel like I'm threatened when a cop approaches me at times. But I, I can't afford to act that way. Yeah. I have to control the situation or control myself in that situation. Right. So that they feel at ease because they don't know what kind of person I am. I don't know what kind of person they are. But that's no different than walking down any alley late at night when it's dark, regardless what the person looks like. You still have to be able to control yourself and exude the confidence in who you are so you come out safely in that situation. And that's all we want everybody to do is come out safely in a situation. Right. You know, I think I think maybe another, like, uh, stipulation to being, uh, like, an officer, and maybe and maybe you just – maybe this doesn't apply to state police because, you know, that's highway patrol and mm-hmm. they kind of cover vast areas. But I think you need to live in the community to police it. I don't think it's okay for – you know, guys who have, you know, who who grew up in, let's just say, white suburbia right. with, with not a lot of exposure or experience or understanding, um, who are maybe fresh college grads with not a fully developed brain, um, to put them in very dangerous areas that they don't live in. I don't think it's okay to police an area you don't live in. You're not from the community. You don't understand the people. You don't understand what's going on. Maybe you don't have the level of empathy needed. You don't have the level of perspective needed. You're an outsider. And then it builds this us versus them even more so, and then it just perpetuates it. So it's like I see I see both arguments. It's like, yeah, you know, you yeah. want to live where you want to live. Sure. You know what I mean? I think, that, I think it goes both ways. In some I, places I it might be bad enough where you can't have the community right. police itself. I, s- but I see the investment in the community. Maybe you might care a little more. But I hate to gerrymander people in that capacity and, and somebody that wants to truly make a difference. I hate the rule. But how many of them do? How many guys get out of the academy and get straight sent straight to North County or North City well, because that's what's could, available? We could say the same thing about teachers, though, right? When you know, one hundred percent. This applies. Yeah, a lot teachers of make or potentially should make more money for teaching in the, the more impoverished areas, or maybe have some type of relief, which people were receiving. Before this get, current administration, right, you you were getting some of those things back for your you know maybe your student loans and that got kind of wiped out. But I, I hate to somebody that truly wants to make a difference or somebody maybe that needs experience. To I hate I just hate to tell somebody that wants to have that job and tell them well you have to live where you because that could also put you in danger. Yeah, well I get that you know right. there's but that, there's merit there's that, I don't there's, want you to think no, I'm, I'm I see both merit. sides because it, yeah. it can be dangerous yeah. living in the place that you're policing. But here's the thing, man. I feel like a lot of us, when we're young, like we're, we have these ideals. We have these. We, we believe things should be a certain way, and you know we enter well, into situations. Not, right. No. We we entered into these situations with good intentions. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I you know your intentions are great, but at the end of the day, like you just, I don't. Your attention intentions don't make change. And, you know, you may have well intentions, but that doesn't change the level of fear that you experience sure. dealing with the situation. And your fear is going to eventually outweigh your intentions. And then that's when you see very, you know, you know the, the red-cheeked rookie turned into the hardened fucking vet. Can. You know, you know, you kind of But then see there's that. also those videos, and we'd be remiss if we didn't say it, um, that – go public and and often I, and I'm, I mention this for two reasons one because it's a fact that I believe it and two because we also get the other side of the argument people say why are you always focus on the negative and why don't you ever talk about the good things well we do and there's those videos out there and I know Shaq was in one of them with the police officer we got the one guy Skate, out, out there and skateboarding out there skate, playing basketball yeah, and, and, that's and just truly good and people and, and, and they exist yeah and let me I mean and again so let me tell a good story we told bad stories I, I was entering my um uh, I think my, my license plate was expired, and I didn't realize it. And as I was turning into my subdivision, a uh, cop pulled me over. And But I was certain to – felt more comfortable because I was near my house. Um, but I also made sure I pulled over in a very public area still 
and my interaction with that gentleman was amazing. Right. Amazing. And I actually uh, had a string of bad luck where maybe there were two stops, like, within weeks apart, and both those interactions were so beyond respectful that maybe this is scary, though, that I was appreciative. Yeah. yeah. You know well, what I mean? I, it should be that way, but I was so appreciative, and I wanted, and I told so many people, though, that I had these great experiences because I don't want people to think that you only focus on the negative, but I'm also, it's not my fault that those are brought to me or that those that I was a victim of those other experiences. Right, right. And let me piggyback on that. And, and let me preface with this while I'm kind of like voicing or some changes I'd like to see. Like we should be paying these officers more. hundred percent. We should be paying teachers, teachers more. more. It, it it should almost be as difficult to be an officer, if not as difficult as it is to be a doctor. Yeah. The standards should, should be, be higher. higher. These people should be treated better. Like they should be well compensated. Should be treated like the creme of the cr- the creme of the creme of right. society. And and with that being said, also before I get to my good stories, because I have like law enforcement has become a for profit business where they need to collect fines and you yeah. know they need to keep things going and it's this money thing and you have lobbying going behind the scenes for the penal system and all of this shit where the true metric should be is crime down great well if crime's down then that means we need less police officers maybe and you know and you guys are maybe doing less right. well guess what that's great for everybody except for business and that's what people forget sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, there are fucking quotas and shit. Like, people yeah. want to deny that shit, but that's real. But I want to say, like, my my very – not my very first. Now I think about it, I say this. My very first actual interaction with the cop, actually, it wasn't bad. But it actually, when I think about it, it wasn't good. When I think – because I was in Potosi, and I was a little kid, and I was riding home on my bike. And there's uh, – you know, I'm going around the corner. But right. instead of going through the corner, I kind of, like – cut through this person's yard yeah, yeah. very little corner of sure, the yard sure. dude very fucking little but this cop stopped me because of that and then like me just being a kid he he was cool he just rolled up beside me and just rolled down his window and he wasn't being like threatened or anything now in hindsight thinking about it but like me i'm like oh shit i wasn't for my for my life but i'm like oh this is so the police, police. Right. i want to so i just like Thor. tell him my name and tell him my address yeah, and yeah. i just start splurring all this okay. shit and he's like well what are you doing i'm like i'm just going home and First of all, you see a kid cutting through a neighborhood, like a yard. You don't need to fucking stop that Probably kid, not. first of all, yeah. right? But second of all, like, I go through all that shit, and he's just like, hey, man, just don't don't cut through their yard, dude. And also on that same note, I kind of see that in the sense of, like, you know, maybe you – Respect somebody's property. Maybe, you, yeah, maybe yeah. you teach a little, a little kid some a respect lesson, to not yeah. go through people's yards, right? And maybe that was his intention, yeah. right? So, like, I've kind of thought about that. But as, like, a, a oh, oh, 16, but as an adult – ish um i got pulled over for speeding on a road and the dude gave me a warning and just told me to go home like he saw a teenager yeah speeding yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, exactly. let him go home and yeah. then another time in high school you know i'm driving home it's late at night it's dark and uh i get a text and i swerve a little bit like i'm in my neighborhood there's nobody even like around sure. so like you get a little lackadaisical and like maybe you know and most accidents happen within like five miles of home. right just yeah. being stupid yeah. right so then like i get home i'm literally in front of my house i park my car lights behind me and this had happened almost like at the beginning of my neighborhood sure which is kind of fucked up right but like the cop rolls up looks at me and he goes uh oh have a good day let me go. He knew me from wrestling. Oh. He knew I was a wrestler. And I've, I've, I've met him before. Sure. We were, uh, me and my buddies, we would, uh, we we found this uh, abandoned uh, tennis court and we'd go play street hockey there. And one day he like rolled up on us, talking to us, just making sure we weren't being like rowdy asshole kids. And he right, was just being right. friendly and, you know, oh no, we're all wrestlers, blah, blah. And he wrestled in high school, you know. So it was like, so he knew me from sports. Right. And he was it helps, like, man. It, it does, dude. The impressions and you he make just, on people, he yeah. literally walked up to me, oh, it's you. Have a good night. Like he's like, what were you doing? I'm like, dude, sorry, I was. Yeah, well, I, the head and he was happened, cool. Michelle and I coming home from Costco one night, and I, I sh- she's like, you got a text. That's what happened, and I didn't stay on my phone, but boom, vibrated like I had it back. Oh, sh- oh shit. Yeah, and then I I put it down. Not that we're saying that you should do that, and you know, and I got pulled over, and the cop said, hey, you were swerving, and you know, sometimes when you see people inside of context where you know them from, it's just you don't recognize them. 
And then he goes to his car, check everything, was back, and he tells me to uh, drive safe. And uh, he'd see me in class, you know, a couple of days. And I was like, uh, uh what? what? And then I got to Hadrigo's class, and then his sergeant was like, man, I, I told him that not to pull you over. And I told him that you're going to ruin it for all of us and that you're going <laughs> to bring down, you know, the rain on all of us. It's going to be horrible. I'm like, oh. And then yeah. I realized what happened. But thank, thankfully, I – just I treated them like humans, and they treated me like humans in right. the class, because that whole interaction could have gone completely different. Yeah, and I didn't recognize who he was. Right. Uh, thankful, he recognized me, and it didn't go. It didn't have to be something. Not that he would have done that. But right. Could have. Could have just been different, and maybe I get a citation for swerving when there was really no reason. For, you know, it could have right. been anything. Right. Right. Um, now, now you just as, never know. As positive as those are, like, there's almost that caveat of like. You know, you need to understand that one, as we're talking about like systematic change and things like there's professional courtesy mm -hmm. in every field. Everything. And cops kind of get away with some shit that they shouldn't. They're, they're probably a little, you know what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. whatever, call a spade, like it is what it is. But also with that same thing, it's like like that good interaction is, is kind of the few. And what maybe like people who you know white people don't understand is like they have far more of those good interactions than we do than we do where, where, where we're telling stories about them and maybe not we as in like you and me it but is we as you but yeah, also as a us. collective but we're telling stories about those good interactions yeah i don't know that i have those conversations with my right friend i, I do have those conversations with white friends because I want them to know there's the other side of it, but I don't know if they have those conversations with each other. And that's not to say that they've never had bad experiences. Sure, because we've all been young. We've all done stupid stuff. But I guarantee you, if we're talking statistically, it's just, it's different. Well, and even if they have a bad experience, I don't know if they necessarily understand how much worse it could have been. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, I know plenty. You had an interaction with them actually earlier today. Uh, I don't want to say his name, but... Uh, he used to wrestle at Lindenwood and, uh, you know, has a gym in the area. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and, you know, a lot of wrestlers used to go to Main Street and get in fights and have bad issues, you know, run-ins with cops. And I'm, I know he's had his fair share of fucked up situations. But what you don't understand is your situations were probably still better because you were white. Even though you got better. sent to jail, even though maybe you even got beat up by the cops, yeah. you probably had some fucked up shit happen to you too. But what you don't understand is, how much is that the likeliness of them killing you is is almost not or much lower. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're not going to lose their shit and maybe see you as not a human. Completely. And some of those interactions, you just I just shut down and don't continue to read because it's unhealthy for me and yeah. i know exactly what it was yesterday and i know exactly what you're talking about. i just stopped reading right right because it was right. i can't i just go to facebook and yeah. go to, to you know remove yeah. this from my and yeah you know, yeah and i can and, and here's and, and and this is maybe this is just me but i i can even see some of the validity in like what he's saying sure sure you know lip service isn't enough right you it's, gotta, never, it's you gotta, never enough you gotta do something but sometimes it's how you, you approach act. it but i hate when people say there's not one person on here that will because then after that, I had people in my personal, on my phone texting me saying, I'd like to think that I would have done differently and done something. And then I, you know, like, um, I had people saying that Kaepernick traded his, his the struggle and his fight for a career. Well, when he started the struggle, he never thought he was giving up his career when he stood up for what was wrong. And he did give up his career. And then the NFL, who did not have a rule against it, because people argue you can't do that at work. Well, his job didn't have an issue with what he did. Later they made a rule, but there was no issue. And then when he got ostracized and then they settled out of court and said, okay, we'll give you another tryout. Well, he still has a right to have a career. Um, he'd done his part. Mm. It was time for him to pass the baton. It was never meant to be his battle solely. It's never meant to be. It's 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 a it's a shared struggle for all of us. Right. And that man does not need to carry it for all of us. He has the right to a career, happiness. Uh, somebody else was making a comment. He only donated this percentage of his. Mm -hmm. I mean, but do you know? First, they say he didn't donate anything. Yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. And but he donated something more important than money. That was his time. Only commodity in life you can't get back is time. Yeah. Literally, we can make more money. Not that it's easy for everybody. Not that we're all 
have the same access to it, but he gave something so much more important than money. And he gave money, and that's his time. He still continues to, but he has a right to live a life beyond that and for somebody else to pick it, pick up the baton and go. It's yeah. not his solely his responsibility. Well, you know what gets me? A couple things, actually. One is people who will say, like, he's not doing anything, but then they'll applaud, like, MLK Jr. or they'll applaud Ali. Mm-hmm. When, right, in fact, had, yeah. when in fact they would have been the exact same people had they been placed in the time to be saying the same shit because about they were those not, people. They were not popular. And people think because of how it ended up with Ali or MLK that that was popular opinion or people loved them, and that's not the case. So many people hated that Muslim. Right. So many people hated this. How dare this educated Negro think he has the right to tell us. He was very unpopular. Right. It's not. It's not until hindsight. Not that, until. Right. And then. And then. And then the next thing is people will say, "Well, you know, you know, that's his fucking job, and I can't go into my work yes, and can. apply and and do this and do that." Well, well, even if you can't, well, you know, let's 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 quit trying to make everything black and white where a job is a fucking he's not working a regular fucking nine to five job no. for a fortune 500 company that's publicly traded you asshole he is a public figure who's let's just at, at the end of the game at the end of the day these are just grown men playing games guys and how dare you they're playing fucking how dare games you be an actor or an actress or a musician and have an opinion that's all you are. They all have that's opinions. A, that's all you are. You know what I mean? We'd be upset if they didn't use their platform to say what something. What else are right. you supposed to do with it? You know what I mean? Now, you can't have it both ways. Right. Now, to that same note, you know, just because you have a platform doesn't make you a fucking expert. No. Shut up and go sing. Shut up and go play. Well, Shut up and dribble. You can you can have your opinion, but yeah. I think what, what's fucked up is whenever as um, – like as a society, the masses, when they start accepting these people's opinions as like the truth or right, like right, like right. this is the way because, oh, Leonardo DiCaprio said we should all start doing, you know, so, be, so being so more true. green. That makes more sense. Well, bitch, we should be more green despite Leonardo. It's great right. he's using his right. platform right. to say that, but he's not the fucking expert. And just because he says it doesn't make it more valid. Right. You just know who the fuck he is. Right. So I'm tired of us acting like certain people are experts just because they have a platform. There's a lot of idiots who have platforms. Right. But then on that same note, again, to the original point, yeah, that's his job. That's how he makes money. But he's not a fucking employee like you are. Yes, he is. He gets checks. He can get fired, obviously. But like, you know, he's not working at what should we call it? Where? But he also has the right to speak his mind because he's an adult. He one hundred percent does. It's freedom of speech. Right, right, right. And it's like, well, he's at work. Well, bitch, like, where else is he supposed to fucking do it? Yeah. The one out. When else is the national anthem playing in which he can do that? I would. Uh, <laughs> like, I've spoke my mind at job at my job when I felt like things were out of line, out of order. Um, and you should. And you should. Yeah, you should. Like, we have a whistleblower's clause for a reason. If you see wrong, you should Speak do something yeah. about it. And make no mistake, you don't think that dude sees wrong within the league? Oh, 100%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, people, it's funny. Well, I, I always have the issue with grown-ass men, you know, playing a game, millionaires mm-hmm. just playing a right, game. Right. But people forget that those millionaires, you know, someone's writing their checks. Yeah. And those are billionaires, and right. they're, all, they're all white. Right. Are there any black owners in the league? Minority owners, minority owners, minority owners, and those are recent. Yeah, yeah. right. So it's just like, but I guess you could say, uh, what's his name for the Rams? Uh, Khan. He's a, he's a you know he's a major owner. Um, then Gloria Estefan in Miami. Um, but the, but, I know, but, but, but so the, few. But that's just portfolio know, for them. I know, man. So <laughs> that's just I a portfolio can. investment. They yeah. weren't. They're not. They're not active in in the organization. They're not yeah. doing shit. They're just like, oh, I can make how much off of ticket sales and right. merchandise. But, and but still, opportunity in <laughs> right. there. But, right. But again, right. it's it's a, it's a minority, which goes back to having opportunity, being allowed in the club because you have to get approved to yeah. have those. Right. How many black head coaches are there in any sport? Yeah. Or managers, coaches, and right, manager. right. So it's just like yeah, speaking of that, like for instance, like I I posted a picture of the the can't breathe shirt that the Lakers were wearing a few years ago, and somebody asked yeah, me Kobe. if that was real, and I was like, and I I didn't feel bad for the guy, but what I I was like, yeah, the NBA is a lot more liberal 
and progressive than the NFL. 100%. Um, and approach things much differently. And it's refreshing to see that. And I'm definitely more of a football fan than a basketball fan. But it's de- I appreciate that about them, that they are allowed to address some yeah. of the things that are actually going on in the world and feel like you're part of you have a voice in your employment with right, your employer. Right. And um, it's okay to get, we recognize what's going on because right. we're all affected by it. You know, so that was, and man, <laughs> prophetic again, can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think we should do? I've, I've, I've obviously said some things I think should maybe change. Um, what do you think? What, law enforcement? Well, World? yeah, what? like law enforcement or how can we fucking like, you know, we, we, you know, tomorrow, Tracy Taylor, you're the president and you have no you have nobody objecting you as far as the House and the Senate. to You know, no, you can thank like you. what? Well, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> know, what, what what can you fix? Um, like, what what are some things that maybe we can do? Nothing, nothing do you overnight. Think? You know, but, nothing's overnight. But what's some but extra I mean, steps? I mean, th- you know, forget for law enforcement. We said, you know, you, yeah. you have to have continued training and it's 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 got to be mandatory. And it's got to be from the fact that, look, man, I, I want you to come home safe. I really do. Bottom line is I need to – we're employed by these individuals, and we need not, not only need, need them to respect us and us to respect them, but I'd like you to go home safely to your family as well. So yeah. it's a win-win for all. Yeah. Um, I mean, you find a way to get – I mean, how do you get money out of politics? How do you, how do you keep it out of people's pockets? How do you do that? I don't I'd know. like to see that change. I'd like to yeah. see us get rid of lobbying. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think people realize one system feeds the other, but like – In the riders – you know, like to get this bill passed, have all these other things attached. Yeah, you gotta yeah layer shit in there. That's crazy. Yeah, you gotta play the game. It shouldn't be so. It shouldn't be so difficult, right? Or you like think it. Yeah, yeah. Well, even like maybe people don't realize this, but like the family court system is independent of like the Constitution. Yeah, it's completely fucked completely up. Different thing. But if you don't think that that feeds the judicial system, you're crazy because it breaks up homes right. left and fucking Absolutely. left and fucking right. The, the you know what I mean? It it keeps people down. It it it, it make like all of a sudden, if you're a male and you get divorced or you're not in the situation, you're, you're not privy. Yeah, you're at the disadvantage and you have to pay money. And oh, if you can't pay this money, guess what? You're going to fucking jail for yeah, it. Yeah. And so no, I just won't work. Right. Right. You're gonna, it, or it, or or you're gonna pay. There, I've seen it where hey, you you got to pay five bucks a month. So, it, but then that breaks up a home, which then uh, creates the single parent household, it which more stress, and which, and, which puts people into the system and the scarcity, yeah. mind, and, the, and then that feeds the other system. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, why can't we just make simple changes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. like healthcare. Healthcare. You know, I, I will. I will gladly. Everybody else has figured out all these other countries. Um, I, I gladly pay more. I pay higher taxes. My household would, in general, just so somebody else who doesn't have what we have would have it. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay doing that. Um, because we've been on the other side when we didn't have much. And if I'm blessed, I'd rather be able to bless other people than have there be crime or have people that don't have struggle. I wish people at the top felt that way. Uh, I, yeah. My, me, I, I have a big issue now, especially with everything going off with, with, with Amazon and Jeff Bezos. And I use Amazon, so, yeah. but like, I didn't realize that Jeff Bezos and Amazon haven't paid like, you know, yeah. state and local taxes for a decade. Right. It's, like, that's fucked it's, up. It's, it's And they up. still don't. And we're bailing out bankers, and, and we have all of these small or businesses yeah. going under. And, and it's the just amount like, of money that the banks made on these loans. What is, that, yeah. For fees. What yeah. is too big to fail? That shouldn't, in a capitalist society, that shouldn't be a thing. Right. If you're it's, failing, you're failing, buddy. Like, hey, guess what, Ford? You're out of fucking business. Hey, guess what, Bank of America? You're out of fucking business. Like, you didn't do what the fuck you need. Like, you didn't do it right. Right. So it's like, how is this too big to fail thing even a thing? It's it's scary. It's um, like. Where's it start? Where's it end? It's like. Uh, I know the, we're the, going. The, the ober, whatever, the snake eating its tail. Yeah. You know, it's it's endless. And I don't know. Maybe, maybe the answer, uh, very simply and very ignorantly, I'll say again, is to have the conversation. Yeah. And I think it. It has to start there, and it has to start with people having courageous conversations and not being and not being afraid to stand up and speak up and just talk. Yeah. And I think is it the is it immediate? But just telling somebody to stop, or telling somebody I see you and I respect you, or have just I mean, and I've seen it happen, and I don't 
maybe I don't know the effect that it's having other pe- on other people, and maybe it's having no effect. Yeah. But I choose to believe just because of how much my inbox has been filled or my text has been grown up or, or the number of phone calls I get that it is making a difference. And I'm something n- nobody. I'm the opposite of that. And if what I do and I see it and then people that people actually – that actually are somebody, so to speak. Yeah. You know, um, it's got to make a difference. And if we can just get people to stick to that or just to have – Empathy. Yeah, have conversations. Have conversations and care enough. So I wanted to tell the story before. I remember being in college when the whole Fat Five were huge, you know, Michigan. And uh, I had two guys down the hall for me that grew up in Springfield, Illinois, that had been friends since, like, birth. And this was my second year in school. We all lived on the same floor. And we were all – I thought we were all good friends. Everybody on the floor, for the most part, was the core group. And I thought I was really good friends with these two guys. And I was in their room, and we were watching a basketball game, and then one of them let it slip. Mm. And it's one of many times that this has happened around me. And one of the guys said, look at these niggers fucking play. It slips. It slips. And, and people then, think it's. So obviously it's a word you use very often. I was choking someone at the gym, and they called me a nigger. I put him to fucking sleep. He hasn't really been to the gym back. He hasn't been back to the gym very much since. I won't say who it is, but yeah. Carlitos was there. I put the motherfucker to sleep. I almost killed him. I was so pissed off. Oh, man, you know me, man. I don't mean that shit. Well, why did that come why, out of your mouth you was as I just default? choked you the fuck out? Why was your out? default? Yeah. Anyway. We'll talk offline <laughs> about that. But um, as much as it hurt when, when he said that, is as much as uh, I felt uplifted, though, by the one I was closer to that didn't accept it from his lifelong friend and looked at him and looked down, looked at him like he was short, gave him the up down and looked at him and just said, I'm disgusted with you. It's like, I don't even know you. I can't believe you'd say something like that. And then yeah. looked at me and said, T, let's go. Yeah. And picked me at that moment over this other guy he'd known for life. And as hurt as I was, I also realized what he'd done and the decision that he'd made. It's a big one. It's a stand. It's huge. He, he made a stand, and that's why I keep telling people when it's uncomfortable for you, you know, make a stand and have the conversation. Right. The conversation is so important, and, uh, you know, it's okay for us to agree to disagree. Yeah. But on some topics, we can't fucking disagree. Some we can't. So, and, and some people. And that's I what sh- people need to understand. Some people I should have let, t- let go a long time ago, and I'd like to keep a couple people around on my friends list just to see because it's good to have a – it's uh, good to see it. A measuring stick and, and yeah. a reminder and just to be reminded what crazy is mm-hmm. and how how many people sometimes are out there and how far to one side they can be. Because it's never going away completely. It's never going to go away. And and you have to try to work within the constraints of that. And it's and I think that's good for you to try to do that and have the discussion. But some people finally – I let – in the last three weeks, I think I've I've gotten rid of four people on Facebook – and that's probably more than I let go in the last four years. Yeah. Because I try to tolerate it to a point so I can have the discussion and so I learn as well. Yeah. And I get people saying, what do you, like, what do you, how can you, or, you know. For right. Well, it helps to, like, objectively, you know, take the emotion out of it and say, well, why do you think that way? Yeah, yeah, for Why sure. do you believe that? Because yeah. there's a reason. There's a reason. I would like to understand. Yeah. And I may I, not agree, but I would I, like to and know. And I choose to believe that innately all people are good, and some people you just can't save. Not that you're attempting to save them, but you can't just, fix stupid, my you friend. Can't fix stupid. <laughs> from, from a distance, you can't argue with an idiot because you don't know who's who. Yeah. And when you find yourself doing that, then it's time for me to. I, I, yeah. I just gotta let you go, and I can't. And you have to not feel bad about that. Yeah, because some people are stupid. I we you, we misuse the word ignorant. I'm as ignorant as the day is long. There's a lot of shit I don't know. Yeah. But there are plenty of people who have been exposed to something and yeah. should know something by now, and they're choosing otherwise, yeah. and they're just fucking stupid. Yeah. It's out there. It exists. And yeah. That, and it and it it breaks my heart. And I think I keep them around because I don't want to be that person. Yeah. That's why I tend to keep them around. Yeah. Yeah, but you just you, you can't fix it. Charlie, by example, to a degree. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. But we got to have the conversation. That's where. It's, so that's if there's something I. That's where I would start, and it it'd be. Just talking, man. It'd just be. You know how many of the conversations would be different that you have on Facebook if they were in person? Because first of all, people wouldn't have the balls to say some of the stuff they say, mm-hmm. and I know that. Um, and some people don't that have good intentions can't always relay those because they're just not eloquent enough either right right but then you have to charge it to the mind there you know, charge that one to my mind not my heart 
But then yeah. I have a hard time with that too sometimes. Well, do because, your best, right? Yeah, do your best. Do your, you best. Do your best. And you ever notice the people who say the most fucked up shit never have their profile picture? Oh, it's either empty it's or it's something always, else. It's always something different. Than yeah, you. it's like. You have to go through how many pictures to actually see who they are. Yeah, it's like, well, if that's not a sign of cowardice. And it's not your real name or your full name. or Right, it's not, right. And that's, it's like, there's a reason that people do that. Right, right. And, and and you can try to say it's for your own protection, and maybe some of it is, but it's yeah. protection from your own actions, yeah. which really just states the that fault. you. It, well, what that translates to is you don't want to deal with the consequences. Yeah. Consequences. Yeah. Which is Every action thing. has a consequence. Equal and opposite reaction. Yeah. Sometimes more. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, dude, we've been we've been doing this for two hours now. Yeah, we always say we're gonna do an hour, <laughs> and it never happens. <laughs> it's always over, yeah. and 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 that's fine. Like, yeah, th- this is a, a fucking super important conversation. I just texted you yesterday. I'm like, dude, we gotta do this. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And like, I have three other podcasts I recorded before this. Be- like, you know, I re- with all this COVID shit going on, yeah. like. I took a month off, and yeah, I had some sure. in the pipeline, and then, like, I released those, and then yeah. it's been almost five weeks since I released anything. So, like, I'm building a pipeline right now, and I'm going to get back on it. So, I have three, but this is coming out tomorrow. What word. Period. Like, I, I appreciate it, you. Like, this, I feel, like, this, slightly vindicated. Um, not that I needed to be, but I feel like a lot of times people take things the wrong way. And I shouldn't say that because the the I've gotten far more positive responses than I have negative, but... Um, I think it's important for people to understand. Yeah. So thank you for the opportunity. Dude, always, obviously, we'll do this again. You're the um, the most appeared guest on the show. <laughs> I got to start doing more round twos. I yeah. realize, like, I do this to make connections, yeah. but I got to maintain the yeah, connection. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I got I to gotta get more yeah. people for round two, but, like, I, I always love our conversations, yeah. and yeah. we'll have many more for I sure. Think, I think what's great is we get to be more than just uh, these stupid athletes with – you know, yeah. brain trauma. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's great to be uh, to be humans, and and it's important. I think it's also important for people to see that you can be an athlete, you can be professional, you can be educated, you can be a black man, or be a black woman. You can be human and be many things. Right. And uh, be seen as those things, and not have to be one. I think that's important. So. Dude, that's that's a beautiful place to end it, man. Yeah. All right, everybody. Tracy Taylor, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, namaste and shit. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody.